Shall we, brother? I'm not ready yet. Hold on. That's okay. Welcome to another episode of Busting with the Boys. What is this? 199. 199. We have some big guests lined up. For everybody, for everybody watching right now, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you do the thumbs up. Hit the little notification bell to get notified when we drop videos. We've been cranking some shit out under the hoods, vlogs, bet the bus, all of it. If you're listening, make sure you're subscribed. Leave those five star ratings. It helps the boys a lot. We are in the top ten. I did check recently. Top ten of what? The um, world? Um, yeah, the world. Of That's podcasting. huge. That's huge. It's the biggest year of our lives, boys. Twenty twenty three is going to be the biggest year. But the only way for that to happen is if you guys make it happen. Some gritty, determined tier ones out there. Yeah, a lot of gritty, de de determined tier ones. But also, you know what's gritty and determined? The what Chevy Silverado, it? amigo. Well, the championship games are upon us, but one team has already won it all. The f team is Chevy, and it's, su and it's star player, the Silverado, a truck with unstoppable grit and determination. According to J.D. Power, Chevy trucks have earned more new vehicle quality awards than any other brand. Mm. That's some serious hardware. Yes, sir. Head over to Chevy.com to learn more. Silverado, as strong and dependable as the people who drive them. For J.D. Power 2022 U.S. Award information, Please visit jdpower.com slash awards. There are some rumblings in my DMs. People in Kansas, people in Connecticut, people in Alabama saying, hey, you need a Chevy? We're going to help. We're going to try and help you out with the no Chevy. Shit. We're, I'm working right now, boss. The I'm Chevy working. Brand, a lot of people helping people. And that's powerful stuff. One of your favorites. <laughs> One of my favorites that's right the, there, doggy. Uh, crashers, boys. Dude, uh, yeah, so the Chevy, it's the it's the best vehicle in the market. I'm driving the vehicle I'm driving right now, and I'm fucking pissed doing it, too, because I see these beautiful Silverados, the ZR1s, the ZR2s that are coming out now, like the new, uh, the new diesel boys I see out there, the Midnight Edition guys. I see them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, holy shit, dude. There's, there's some... Incredible vehicles. And I'm like, why am I driving this POS? Set your sights on a particular Chevy Silverado. Very and particular. I won't ruin it for the people out please there. Please don't. Please don't. I know you're excited to get your hands on one. I'm very excited, dude. Um, One thing we're probably not excited about is... Not me, but maybe you need to say something to the people of Kansas City. Whoa. <laughs> I don't want to start off a pod like this. It's been a long weekend. I had a nice little family trip. There's a lot of great games going on. The internet was exploding with all bunches of information. But one thing that's been holding true, like there's the mayor of Cincinnati that fucks shit up. There's the whole city of Cincinnati that fucks shit up. But I feel like it all started with Will Compton in August. Uh-oh. I don't... <laughs> It's hard to say. It's like everybody's doing their everybody's doing their picks, right? Who's going to win the division? My hot take of the year was that, and I am getting it crammed down my what throat was right it? now. No pause. It was that the Kansas City Chiefs will not make the playoffs. That was my hot take. Now they're in the Super Bowl. The boy, yeah, I know, I know. The boy, I've I've probably uh, wore the silver and black for a couple years for a mm -hmm. couple seasons, and so it was like best uniforms. The Raiders were like on paper set up to like win the Super Bowl in the offseason, right? Yeah. They, they won the offseason, as yeah. they like to say. The Chargers were looking nasty. Khalil Mack, you got Bosa, you got all these boys, right? Herbert, he's got another year of development. He's slain, he's got long hair. Yeah. And even the Broncos, they got Mr. Unlimited. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he was yeah. going to be a, that division was like, everybody was talking on it like the SEC of the NFL. Like that Which, was the division, that's right? A crazy shot. That's a crazy before, shot. Before, yeah, before the season started, that was the superior division in football. And they, uh, Kansas State lost Tyreek Hill. They right. traded Tyreek Hill to the Dolphins. They seemed like right. maybe they were going through a little bit of a reboot. And what was, they had lost to the Bengals last year in the AFC Championship. Or was yeah. that the, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 By three points. Bills. Yeah. And um, so that was like, my hot take of the year. When you got when you have a hot take, you got to make it spicy. You know what I mean? And that was a spicy, dude. Muy spicy. caliente hot yeah. take. And I feel like it gets a little, you know, put up there a little bit more because there's a lot of like the Husker fans, the Kansas City Chiefs are like their pro team. So, you know, people were like saving their receipts. When it got dicey for me is when it's like, the minute they won the division, everybody just kept blowing up that fucking tweet. Like, hey, take this, motherfucker. Like, grabbing my hips and just thrusting away at me. <laughs> thrusting like, away. He's eating his words. Pulp fiction, gag ball in your exactly, mouth. Exactly, exactly. And so, from that point, I needed them to lose in the playoffs. Yeah. And they haven't. <laughs> no, they haven't. So, I don't understand, like, why I would necessarily need to say an apology. I was wrong. I think the best thing, you were wrong about the hot take. I was very wrong. I was yeah. very wrong about the hot take. And like throughout the year, of course, I'm going to lean into more and more. Like that's, that's fun. That's the internet for us. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been crammed in my throat. I was very, 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 very wrong about the Kansas City Chiefs. Until now. Right. Now, 
here's what Kansas City needs to be weary of. I might be taking the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Uh oh. I think that's what I got to do. Oh, so you're playing a big game of chess right now. I don't know. You're sacrificing the queen to win the game. I, I don't see. I don't know that. After last night, like I was in a haze. Like man, I'm I'm truly in a slump. I can't I can't win anything out yeah. there in the sports book. I I the last two weeks. I've been non-existent. I haven't been able to give the people value and people are quick to forget the big winners we've had all year long. Like right. we've won a lot throughout the regular season in the NFL. But after these last two weeks, people are coming at my head. Like this dude just talking nonsense. He bets emotionally. Like this is why you fucking suck. And like oh. a lot of mean, a lot hurt of your feelings. Stuff. Yeah. A lot of hateful stuff going on. There's a lot of Roger Goodell burner accounts out there just coming after my neck. Yeah. But I'm thinking to myself, it's gotten to the point, bro, that I'm like, how do I fade myself? You know what I mean? Like, how do I truly fade myself? Because if I try to think like, okay, I'll, I'll go for the Chiefs next week. But am I in my heart of hearts? Is that what I'm doing? Am I going to say- Or is that another emotional bet? Right. I'm like, I don't even, I can't trust myself. That's what kind of funk I'm in right now. Yeah. I don't even know how I can trust myself. I'm like, man, I really, I need to figure out how I fade myself. I don't know. I've been watching a lot of like Star Wars Yoda videos, like trying to get to the depths trying to go to the fundamentals, like go to the forest, like literally trying to like get to yeah. know myself. Hit the a little swamp bit. up. Yeah. Hit the swamp up. Yeah. Get to know myself on the deepest level to know, you know, what is going wrong. You need to go back to hell. You got to go yeah. back to hell yes. to get back up. I know. Know what it's like to suffer. And you're, that's where you're in right now. You're just in a hell and you just keep suffering through this. I think that big W is coming for you in two weeks. We Two need, weeks time. We need. We w. don't need nothing, brother. Yeah, I, yeah, you I'll need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you emotionally. Right, right. I'm with you as right. as your friend. Like I'm here for Will Compton. Yeah. But when it comes to you pressing tap on right. the Barstool yeah. sports book, like buddy, I forget, yeah, that's I your own yeah. battles. He said, no, 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 no. It's not. <laughs> this is not we. Very much. But it's like, did you guys back me this weekend on my bets? Oh, Blossy. Bloss is upset. Jack, that's who I want to know about because Jack's been known to turn his back Jack, on me. But Jack, it seems like Jack knows when to turn his back on you because I've seen it happen. I've seen Jack look at you putting your 17 leg parlays in, look over at me, and he goes, watch this. And then winks, watch this. And hits that. And then he does the exact opposite. And I see you at the end of the day suffering, kind of like we saw Corey Levin after day one in Vegas. Yeah. And then I see Jack... Willing to buy the drinks that night. Prosperity. Yes. Falls into his lap. Yeah. Uh, I didn't, I haven't been on the best street the last three weeks. So I'm kind of in the same boat, but I didn't take your plays, but still ended up losing. Brother, you went, you went hard this weekend, huh? Yeah. Justin came in town and took it by that surprise. Voice. He sounded like Compton. It was a, it was a movie uh, out there in the streets, huh? Yeah. yeah. So I'm still trying to get back to 100%. Uh, the voice makes it seem a lot worse than it is. Nah, but, brother, you just live in that hell, bro. We're all just in hell right now. I, yeah, you couldn't have said it better. We are suffering, but for a greater good. For a greater good. And that's the number one thing to think about, bro. You're going through shit? Just think, I'm going to suffer through this, take the most out of it, and I'm going to keep on moving forward. And we'll like Michael Chandler likes to say, we'll see you at the top. Yeah. And I think your top's coming in 13 days. I tell you what, when you said you need to go back to hell, is like, I couldn't have been more motivating. It's like, the only way through, the only... The only way to it is through it. Mm. Mm. That yes, but that's your line. I just helped you. I just yeah, guide yeah, the yeah. words. I mean, it's we all we all pull from lines. Like that's not even actually my line. No, but I what's original, that. right? It's like what goes back to our conversation. Exactly. Is there any original thoughts? Right. But you're right. Like when you said you got to go back to hell, I was like, yeah. Because <laughs> seriously, last night I'm Bro, like, you don't go back to it, dude. You've already taken the elevator down. You've hit the bottom floor. You're there. You're standing up. The gate, the doors open, and the flames are all around you. Some badass looking dude with some horns. I say badass because I think of Tenacious D. In the pick of destiny, when he's going after him, that dude looked kind of cool. I know it's the devil we're talking yeah. about, but the shit looks dope. You're there. Yeah. You're staring him in the eyes. And I'm he's laughing out, in your fucking face. Right. And I'm trying to figure out the wrong things. I'm not looking directly at him being like, I need to go through no. this. No. I'm trying to figure out how do I figure this out? But that's not, the answer's right in front of me. And dude, one thing that you really need to think about is what a lot of people in the NFL are, are talking about in the NFL right now is, what do they know that we don't? Is know, this bro. world we're living in, this simulation that we're living in matrix is it real well, is the nfl who is what well, your words or you've told me this this is your the, you go and say the entertainment you thing say it? you say it yes because okay. i don't want to butcher it look who's gone you want to answer that no we'll hit him up after yeah we do have to talk to him we need to talk to him we do need to talk to him 
My wife last night was like, how much did you lose this weekend? Oh, tough I, question. She's like, because I know you lost last weekend too. And I just, I was like taking my supplements before bed. And I could just go, sweetheart, ask me after the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, no, seriously. And I'm like, I'm being serious. We're not talking. I don't want to. We're not go talking about this right now. I don't want to go through this right now. She's like, man. man, it's really like that out there. I was like, sweetheart, I've lost every fucking one. Everyone. Yeah. And it's because I just get two. I just, the picks, there's nothing I can say there. I was wrong about the picks. But once it comes to parlays, man, I get too horny for them parlays. Uh, you do love parlays. But you do pick some parlays. I look at it. I don't bet. I don't know how to bet. I really have, I've never placed a bet. But I look at your bets on Twitter. I'm looking at the numbers. AJ Brown, 49 receiving yards. How does that not happen? How you think, you think there's, there's no fucking question. It's the Waffle House. Joe Burrow, one and a half uh, touchdowns. touchdowns. He's going to throw think two in this big game? He's going to yeah. sling that motherfucker, dude. Absolutely see it. Joe Cool, right? He does a spinning thing. God. He does the fucking spinning throw. And you think he's going to do that shit in the game? And I'm looking at it, I go, man, comp is really about to set it the fuck off. Yeah. There was legit, he was almost in the teens when it came to legs in the parlay. But you're hitting a, half, a baker's dozen of them boys. I know. You've been a millionaire after that shit. Yeah, when that thing was reading plus 650, I was like, people are going to be fired up. It would have been huge. And buddy, the worst thing people can do in slumps is to start getting in their head and be like, maybe I need to take a break. The only thing to beat a slump is to keep swinging through it. Yeah. Keep swinging through that shit, dude. That. You just keep swinging that back because guess what? Dingers are coming. Yeah. So what, dude? You went 0 for 4 in a game, dude. It's a, it's a, betting is just like baseball. It's a game of failure. You just fail a little less than everybody else and you're a fucking winner. Now you just got a little bit of a slump, but your percentages, you're still making the all-star game. You're still a fucking stud. You're in the Pro Bowl. You're we in the Pro Bowl. You're in the All-Star Baseball game. Yeah. You're a stud, bud. Yeah. And don't let anybody tell you different. But enjoy hell, dude. Enjoy the suffering you're going through right now because it's going to make that pinnacle so much better. And I can't wait to see it. Now, what we really need to figure out, is the NFL rigged? Embr embrace the suck. Is the NFL rigged? Did Was Brock Purdy really hurt? Is, was whoa, he really whoa, hurt whoa. last night? I'm just saying about the things that were going on in the NFL. You're starting to say, is Brock Purdy part of the NFL being rigged? It's not. Is Kansas City that loud where they have to redo a whole entire play? Kansas City is fucking loud. Mitch in the corner just hit, hit me with a quick yes with a, with a sharp neck turnaround. I'm sure Can he did. Can we not look at the film of the fucking sky cam and see if the, if the, if the ball hit the wire? Did that Tony Romo wild. almost say the N-word on TV? Like, there's a whole lot of shit. It's like, that goes that into I, the NFL being rigged. Hey, Tony, you're going to say this exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, I, told, I think I, I, that's, a, that's a joke. I don't think Tony did that on purpose or on accident. I don't think he was even, that was even you a thing. he did it on accident? I don't think he did it. I, I, I don't think he did it at all. I don't think he did it at all. I don't think he did it at all. happening right now? You, you're saying you don't think he did yeah, it at all? Yeah, I'm backing up because I don't want to, you know. I don't think it was I an like accident. I like Tony. Yeah, I, I think Tony's a stud. Yeah. I'm just trying to fucking cause a little chaos here. Is the NFL so interested in New Heights podcast and how much they're doing so well that they need to have both of the Kelsey brothers in the Super Bowl? I I kind of like that. Now, if you want to pause on that and just put it there for a second, boys, we got a modern day warrior movie going on right now. We got Jason Kelsey, the fucking bully dog, the athletic, strong, get right in your face, first round knockout, off its lineman type of individual. And then you got the finesse guy. The guy likes to ground and pound a little bit. He knows jiu-jitsu. Travis Kelsey probably doesn't look like uh, a high school teacher, but if I was going to put them in phrases, I'd be like, okay, this is the high school teacher, and this is, and then Jason Kelsey's probably Tom you Hardy think, think in the Marines. Travis is not Tom Hardy? That's what I'm saying. I no, Travis is Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. Jason, to me, is Jason's Tom Hardy. I think teacher. Jason's a school teacher. Grounded. The reason why, because offensive line mentality, old, old, dude, he's a dog. Take it easy. Take he's it a easy. dog Jack, right now. Jack, take it easy. Yeah, 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 watch it. Will knows about the voice. We're trying to get you back to 100 I'm saying now. Jason Kelsey is Tom Hardy. I'm say, I You're saying Travis the opposite. Is, yeah, because he's more the wild card. He's more of like, you know, yeah. But if you look at their play, Jason Kelsey is obviously a much more physical football player than Travis Kelsey. Both extremely talented. One of them Travis to, Kelsey, one of the best tight ends of all time in the NFL. If one of them were to be like the school teacher and to be about their family and we're going to win this money, you know, for for like that kind of cause. I'm not I thinking about more, that. I, think I wasn't thinking about Jason that. Kelsey. I was thinking about just, uh, just strictly NFL in that box gameplay. Yeah. Now you got these two, and, the and you know, in two weeks, but the, those two, the Kelsey brothers, who are probably the most notable fa family in the NFL, they have to be since the yeah. Mannings were in town. It was either it was the Mannings, and then it was 
the Questenberry family, and now it's <laughs> and and now it's the Kelsey the family. Berries. But boys, don't get it twisted. We're sitting in we're sitting in an octagon right now. We're sitting just outside of it, about to watch two brothers go at it, go face to face. And at one point, one brother will have the other brother on the ground saying, "I love you. Just quit. I love you. Don't make me do this." And they're gonna have to fucking do it. They're going to have to do what needs to be done in this game. And it just adds to the story. The Andy Reid Bowl, right? He was the head coach of the uh, the Eagles. Eagles. Now he's the head coach of the Chiefs. We got shit coming up in this game that fits a massive media narrative that would play into the fact that a Disney movie and play into the fact that the NFL being an entertainment entity may in fact be rigged. I don't know how you do it. What do you think? Do you think the NFL is rigged? I don't. I, I, I don't, all the games I've played in my life, being able to play those games in the NFL, I never once thought, man, they're just at the guess. I do think, I do think play calls sway a certain way, right? When I first got in the league, it would sway towards the Colts with Andrew Luck in there. It would sway towards the Patriots. And you kind of did feel that playing for the Titans, especially when you're losing a lot of games. No one gives a shit about the Titans in that situation. Now, the argument to that is, is if you're the Bengals and you're the Chiefs, what does it matter who you see in the Super Bowl there? Why do you need to make sure that the Chiefs make the Super Bowl? Because Cincinnati fans rip hard. The mayor's out there calling for a paternity test the week before, which massive fuck up by the mayor. Massive. You do that shit today. Like they win that, Cincinnati wins that game. You do it today. He has the cool little binder. He opens it up. It looks very formal. Is there a paternity test to make sure that Joe Burrow is the father of Patrick Mahomes? You do that. You gave them way too much shit. But Both of those fan bases are going to travel. Both of those fan bases are starving for Super Bowls. And I say starving even though fucking the Chiefs have been there, what, three of the last four years? Insanity. And they've won one. But they're just fucking starving, dude. You're a flyover state. You're ripping it. That's all you got, allegedly. It's fucking one of those deals. Cincinnati's never sniffed one. So why not put Cincinnati in it if you're going to make sure the game is rigged? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think it was. It, I think it was scripted before this game even happened. You know what I mean? What are you talking about? You talking about what they were talking about? Yeah, on, I don't uh, think it comes down to this week. Who do we want to win this game? I mean, I personally think like, look, remember the video where you're like pointing at all the refs. You tried to take it from us. You tried to take it from us. Yeah. Now it's it saddens me to see you drop to your knees for the league. No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. Haven't we're not ever, gonna cross. Have, we're we're, oh, we're gonna have to. Ever, we're, no, we're gonna pause right there. Haven't you ever hey, wondered why? Don't do that. Have you, haven't you ever wondered why offenses? We're both sitting up in our chairs. Haven't you ever wondered why offenses script the first fifteen? Yeah, because you have script a game plan. These it. are the these are w, NFL same entertainment entity as registered as the WWE. I and I get that. And listen, I will play into <laughs> big brain thoughts. I'm telling you, I will. The, the, I will be a sheep the, in this the, situation where I'm like. The purity of the game still lives in my mind. Devontae Smith, he that was an incomplete pass on fourth down. Change, change that like that right there, because they went on to score. Mm-hmm. And they just got on the ball, you know, snapped it like it never happened. And then after commercial break, they come back. Oh man, this was a uh, they didn't show any replay, no none of that type of stuff until after commercial break. You don't think there's something going on there? I think that is pretty fishy. Block in the back. After the punt for the Chiefs, there's a block in the a back. A blatant call. block in the back. A blatant block in the back. It doesn't get called. Now, all I'm going to say is this. Oh. After watching that Netflix, uh, what is it? That special of that NBA referee. You know what I'm talking about? That NBA referee that was like, he's like, if if there's a game, he's like, I can control it if it's like within you know, three to five points. Who's to say the human element that's out there? Like there could be referees in the system that are like that. Shoeless Joe Jackson. I think it's very fun to play into the NFL as a yeah. mentality. I think a- you can just continue to just make up stuff. What about why the ball is placed here? Why is it placed there? I, I do think there's like, uh, you know, I don't ultimately think the game's rigged, but it does suck how often the referees are controlling these some of these games. Yeah. Because, you know, some of those outcomes don't look that way. You know what I mean? It's like if uh, – they get that Devonte that Devonte Smith catch right now. They did a tremendous job getting on the ball, tempoing. Let's get this snap off. Devonte right. knew right when he got up. He starts doing that hand gesture. Let's get on the fucking ball before anyone even thinks this isn't a bad catch. Because all anybody was worried about, he one hand snagged it and kept his feet in bounds. He was nowhere close to being out of bounds. But that's ultimately what people were looking at. They didn't see the rollover and everything else. Right. He did a great head job, heads up play. The entire offense getting on the ball, snapping it. But if they are able to review that play, Which they are. That was 
on that was on fourth and three, I fourth believe. Fourth and four. Yeah, yeah. Fourth and short to where it's like, boom, that's the Niners football. Yeah. And then maybe Purdy Mid-field. doesn't Purdy doesn't get hurt. I you know, I want I'm curious on the MRIs that come back with Purdy because if you're yeah. if you're out of the game, you're in the nat, you're in the I was almost saying national championship, the NFC championship game, and then you ultimately come back in, you're kind of warming up on the sideline. I he probably tore his his CCL? elbow ligament. UCL? UCL. Yeah, UCL. Yeah. He probably tore that, maybe a Tommy John or something like that. But it's like, man, you got to figure, you, you got to find a way. What I got upset about is the way the Niners didn't continue to try and fucking win the game. Blossom, I'm looking at you because you're a massive Niners fan. But the fact that you just continue to run the ball and ultimately give up, did, were you able to catch? I know you're flying back. I was at from, the airport. I was flying back. Yeah, I was in yeah, Salt Lake City. Yeah, bit. I was too busy getting those Legos. Yeah. Um, and I know I'm starting to talk about the game now, but getting back to the NFL being rigged, I don't necessarily think it's rigged. I just, I, I, it sucks that the referees control some of these outcomes way more than I feel like they should be. And I know it's not fair to say, but there needs to be a level of like, when the game's on the line, these type of situations. Now, when Patrick Mahomes gets knocked out by 58, that late, that is a flag that should have been called. That's just, that's just what the fuck it is. Dude, Dude, young cat too. Young cat had a great game too. It was low key balling. He was doing really well. But you got to kind of, I think at a certain point in the game, you got to let them play. Let it get a little more physical. Let it get a little more chippy. If there's a little more hand fighting out on the outside, let that happen. A couple tugs here and there. Like, don't influence the game so much to where it's like third and 14, first down, holding. Now you're third and uh, 23. Like, that is just tough because it's like you're now... Like the, uh, if it's a blatant over the top getting knocked out after three feet of in the ground, you got to call that. Mm-hmm. But let's get a little loose with the rules when these boys are at massive crunch time in a massive game like this. It's week six. You want to call a, a petty hold here and there? Go ahead. Do your thing. That's that's the way the game is. That Those are the rules. But you're in the AFC NFC championship, dude. It's like you're this fucking close to the Super Bowl. Like let the boys kind of just figure it out between themselves. Yeah. Like but, there's, but, a, there's, a big, there's a big fight at the school and the, the principal goes to run in and one of the teachers goes, no, let them figure it out. Yeah. Like that's what we need. That's what we need for the refs to do a little bit. I, but here, what about the flip side now? What if that hit happens out of bounds and you're a Chiefs fan thinking we would be in field grunge and we end up winning that game if they were to not call that? But that's, you know what I'm saying? That's where it goes to the grave. What I'm saying is if it's super blatant like that was, 58 hit that, that wasn't, that was for lack of a better word, an extremely idiotic play by number 58 for Cincinnati. Now I know he's probably waking up this morning. There's listen probably busting with the boys. Listen, busting with the boys. He's probably got some real rough DMs from some Cincinnati fans. Sure. And you know he's his own worst critic in there. Like he did ball all the way through. There was a there's a beautiful uh clip of BJ Hill mm, sitting yeah. there with the the young individual. I wish I could I could remember his name. If we could look that up, what's his name? Asai. Okay, his, not, his name's Asai. BJ, sitting BJ there, tears there like, in his Evo. eyes. And yeah, BJ's like, let's ask a different question. He's answered that question. Let's ask a different question. The man made a mistake. It's not the reason why you guys won or lost the games. You saw Butt Kiss or whatever the fuck his last name is. Bucker? Who's the kicker? Bucker? You saw him hit that thing through the uprights, no problem. If you would have tacked on 10 more yards, 15 more yards, he's still smacking that shit through the uprights. I don't know if he is, bro. No. He, 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 didn't, he didn't hit the middle of the net. He didn't put... Didn't he get it right over? It was like... No, it went over, bro. It went over. If it was two more, like two or three more yards, it would have hit probably the ball. Yeah. Bro, he didn't he put almost it. missed it. He, a kicker, he just what pulling out. The, fuck out a kicker is just putting out <laughs> different clubs, bro. Instead of taking a three wood out, he put, put, took the pitching wedge out and just lo- lopped that thing know, in there. Five yard compared to a 45 yard is a big, you know, it's, it's at home, big game. He's a phenomenal kicker. I say he's making that kick. It's going to OT. It's or it goes to OT now, but there's a lot of things that could have happened in that game that go the other way. Well, if Patrick Mahomes doesn't fucking just have an absolute <laughs> Jameis Winston against Oregon in the national championship game where he just flops that ball, that ball just flops ass in the air. What if that doesn't happen? And then, then Chiefs are winning anyway, you know? It's just a whole bunch of things that could have happened in this game. It's not the kid's fault because of one play. It's idiotic. It's stupid. Let's give the kid some grace. Objectively talking about that play, it's like, yeah, it's you can't. It's, you can't it's, a one, it's one play, right? There, there's There's... 60 plus plays on both sides of the ball in every right. single game, including special teams. You know, this just fucking is what it is. Chiefs will be tough though, man. Do you think, I think you take the Eagles without question, unless their receivers can come back. Yeah. Juju Smith Schuster with a knee. You got, uh, who was, um, number 17. He had a little pelvis deal, right? Yeah, that, that's Miko Hardman. Hardman has the pelvis. Okay. So we got, we got ankles, knees and, and hips. 
right? We got ankles, knees, and toes. Ankles, knees, and toes. We got we got all the fucking deals. Patrick Mahomes giving him two weeks. That ankle, he looked just fine on that motherfucker, dude. He was out, out there slinging the ball. He is the youngest goat. He, that is what it is, dude. He is the you MVP saw his playoffs in uh, championship, uh, his touchdowns in championship games. He's got 14. Tom Brady's what, 20 or 21? In he's five already games. second on the list. Yeah. He's already and five of those motherfuckers. Joe Montana, who's had what? Who had seven games, I believe. Dude, he's, oh, he's already youngly goated, dude. And we use that phrase a lot. But he really is. Like, but if you don't get... MVP of the yeah, league. he is the MVP of the league. You don't get... Um, which we need to go back to that a little bit because I think he's getting some Michael Jordan-esque uh, type stuff when it comes to the MVP. But um, he doesn't get those receivers back, dude. They are having a bit of a struggle time. The Eagles, top to bottom, arguably are the most well-made team in the NFL aside from the 49ers. Those are the two best, like, as far as, like, position by position, depth, strength, the best team in the NFL. The Eagles should win the Super Bowl. They should. So. They should win the Super Bowl. Now, I think we've all been put in a situation where you, where Patrick Mahomes is turning to Tom Brady. You don't doubt Tom, ever. Father time, the whole thing. Can he win it again? He's going to make a big run. What if he can't do this or that? He's getting too old. Oh, he's got an ankle injury. These types of things. You can sit there and look at it, but you never doubt Tom Brady. And that Patrick Mahomes is now in that upper echelon. Bro, he's so fucking good. He's so elite. He's so smart. He's so good with the ball. He dices motherfuckers up playing backyard football. He does some crazy shit, spinning, no-look passes. You cannot count him out. On paper, the Philadelphia Eagles should win the Super Bowl by probably 10 or more points. Yikes, bro. I don't on know about paper. that. Because it's like on the, paper, bro. The Chiefs came out of the tougher conference. Argue you, that's what you can argue. The AFC top to bottom is the tougher conference. I mean, the NFC, like yeah, you got you have a handful of teams in the NFC. Yeah, but the Eagles had to go through all that. But the, I'm saying, I'm saying from a personnel standpoint, they have the they have better wide receivers. They have a better offensive line. They have probably an equal D line. You're you're right. You I, to top to bottom is a better team. And I know you're playing. I look at you wearing the jersey. I mean, I, I got to represent. Just more you got to so. represent. And I respect it. I'm looking at everything just on paper right now. Well, the did you see the spread and what it, what it, how it we were how it shifted? Yeah, because it was it was the Bengals minus one and a half, and then ended up going Chiefs like minus two or three. The right? line opened up with the Chiefs like minus one and a half, two and a half, and it's now flipped. So the oh, Eagles, you talking about the Super Bowl? The Super Bowl. Now the Eagles are now favored. I mean, I like the the Eagles top to bottom. I think are definitely a better team. Like definitely a better paper. team. But I mean, like Andy Reid going against his own, his uh, his old team. Like I mean, like you said, you can't count, count out Pat Mahomes. It's this is going to be a big rest couple of weeks for them. I know. Yes, you you, know, you, you got to hope those MRIs come back today that they're getting right now in Kansas City. Those things come back negative. They look good. Hey, it's a little. Hey, it's not a high ankle sprain. It's a low ankle sprain. We're glad you took it off. Let's get ready to play the Super Bowl. Hey, your pelvis. It is a bit of a deal. Maybe we should look at the off season, But you can play type thing. And 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 the knee with Juju. That was a weird little. That was a weird little deal. I thought he blew his shit out when it happened. Everybody, everybody that is able to play, whether it's at 70%, 60%, every player is going to find a way to play. Find a way to play. Lane Johnson playing on a torn fucking groin. And he was doing very well against Nick Bosa. Now, Bloss, I've seen it. People have said it before we started this podcast. People are talking about Lane Johnson being a false starting. I will literally tell you from experience... I, every single game I have played in the NFL, there was always a tweet of why is Terrell one always false starting? He is timing up the snap incredibly well. Yeah, he's moving while the ball's probably being clinched by Jason Kelsey's hand. Buddy, that is an outstanding elite move by a tackle to get out of a stance against elite pass rusher. That's going to fly every single time. If you're not early, you're late. That's how it works in O-line. That, having a snap count a jump on the snap count in the NFL is so critically important against elite pass rushers. Lane Johnson did nothing wrong there. Yeah. Nothing wrong. And you can bitch, you can play and moan the whole time. Listen, they, they that is how the game is played. You got to know the rules and use the rules to your advantage. Lane Johnson is doing that and he's doing it extremely well. He's a stud. I want to say somebody was even out there breaking down that rule. Like there is some... There is some wiggle room in that to where... Is it really? Yeah, it's like proving what he's doing is not actually illegal. But so, no, he's a stud, man. I mean, playing on that torn groin, uh, torn off the bone, like that's fucking insane. His shit's but black and blue that, right that, now, that, dog. With the Super Bowl coming up and you got two weeks to rest, like every player is going to fucking do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Playing the fucking Super Bowl? Bro, 
2019, we're this close. Yeah. This fucking That's why I'm curious dude. what's going to come back with Purdy, just because it's like, man, what? I wonder what happened. Man, and you got to think, too, like, giving you don't it, want somebody to be injured, but if I'm Brock Purdy, I'm like, please, God, something be torn. Yeah. To give the benefit of the doubt, I'm going to assume he probably tore his UCL, like, rough. Which, which is a Tommy John's? Yeah. I know a couple pitchers that got Tommy John surgery who literally got Tommy John surgery and then came back and pitched faster. It's one of those deals where it's like, it's almost better yeah, to tear it. Like, I think it's like, like you become six, better because of it type like thing. six week rehab or something like that. No, it's much longer than that. Really? Yeah. The UCL is like the ACL of the, of the elbow. The Maybe I saw the wrong tweet. If yeah. It's not a UCL. If it's not a UCL, it'll be six weeks. But if it is, it could be anywhere from 10 months to almost two years. But to go back, like I said, I didn't see the game. I saw Will's tweets, and it does seem like if you're just running the ball in that type of situation, being down by that much, just toss some slappy out Plus, there. How'd you feel as like a Niners fan? Because seriously, like the fact that they're they ultimately, it's almost like everyone knew that they were at a disadvantage. It's like, hey, this the deck is stacked against you. Everybody kind of knows that. You lose your four string quarterback to a concussion. Uh, he's got to go back and get checked out. He's out of the game. Brock Purdy comes back in. You almost think. Can you do underneath throws? At least fucking try. All Short the, to intermediate. All the double reverse stuff that was going on, man. It's like, what are you guys trying to do? It's the, it's the top of the fourth quarter, and you're just running the ball, and time is running out. Like, at least try to throw the football. Like, at least try to die an honorable death. Knowing you're, trust me, everyone in the media is going to ultimately talk about how they were, it sucked. They went through four quarterbacks. There's no winning that game when you're down that much. But at least fucking make an attempt to get back in the game yeah. by letting... Throw Christian well, McCaffrey out there, dude. Right. CMC, he threw it that one time. Like, let it fucking spin. He threw it, you know, nobody was around. But Kyle Juice, anybody, like, who wants to try to throw the football Debo, out there? he fucking can do everything, it seems like. Right. Like George Kittle, let him rip that motherfucker around a little bit. At least try. Everyone yes. knows, like, it's almost like you're... What it seems like objectively, like you're like the kid who's pouting and you're like, well, I already know I'm going to lose this game. Like, let me continue to just shove the face in the pillow of the fact that we are going to lose this game. Right. And it's like, like I'm gonna yeah, prove, like this is I'm already take my ball and go home type yeah, vibe. Exactly. Like, OK, you guys want me to keep playing fine. I'll still keep playing. And then they're it's like, come on, man. Make yeah, a fucking effort. that is exactly what it is. We all know that fucking kid, yeah. too. It's like, bro, don't ruin that. You lost. Like, yeah, get over it. Yeah. At least make an effort, uh -huh. bro. That's what I was, and I wonder if I was it, talking about. I wonder if that plays in a uh, Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan's a, 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 an offensive genius. He's a fucking stud the way he gets it done. But when you're an offensive genius, you low key be thinking you, you can become invincible running double reverses and stuff. I didn't see the plays, but maybe they were trying to be a little too pretty at the end there. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's like, okay, we're going to have to run the rock, which, again, you, you knew you had to lean on the run game more, but fuck. You know, the Eagles are just over there like, let's just stack the box until they show that they're even going to throw the ball. Like, right. let's fucking engage eight in the Madden playbook. Like, exactly. send everybody until exactly. they show that they're just going to try to throw the football. You just can't mm. beat that. And But hats off to the Eagles. Though. They're a fucking tough team, man. They started the year hot. What was it, 8 No, and we're sitting on the bus talking about how they were like riding the bikes after games, getting ready for a Thursday game. Like, you could just tell their juice and their vibe and their energy in that locker room was top-notch. Uh, Jalen Hurts giving those uh, post-game talks to the whole team, and you just see everybody locked into Lock the fuck and in. Say, early, knew, too, which is early. crazy. That's how you knew a team. Like, this team is going to be fucking tough to deal with. He gets hurt late in the year. They actually battle some adversity dropping he i think they were zero and two without him right going into the playoffs and it's kind of like you know are the eagles going to be good are they going to be this are they going to have a lull get in the bye week and then lose the first round of the divisional round and they've shown like playing the niners and i know that the niners they like didn't have their quarterback but also to still show up and fucking put an ass whooping on that team they're still a good football team the niners are it's not like you got some amateurs out there playing football right but the eagles are fucking tough man they've been <laughs> they've been doing it all year they've been doing it all year how about Kayvon Thibodeau? To tweet now, bro, the way they look, we're better than the Niners. Ugh. And then Joe Staley coming in with an absolute hey, 15 maker. second KO. Yeah. And if they hit Cave on, we, you probably watch. Stop <laughs> with the fucking uh, who are you comments. It's funny the first time, dude, but let's find some legitimate chirps 
to put on somebody. You don't know who Joe Staley is? I don't believe that for a second. But what I would do if I don't know the individual is I would Google the fuck out of them. Find that wiki. Find that one little space. Maybe they had like a indecent exposure or some type of shit that happened when they were younger. No, no, no. I don't know. I'm just saying they they got some some little shit that you know happened back in the day. Like Joe got his uh uh his eye like fucking broken, like his orb orbital bone was like broke, and he had this dope ass like blacked out visor when he was playing like his last couple of years. But you can fucking say, hey, you can't see shit because you're right. Something. You're like, let's not do the who the fuck are you thing anymore. Who That's you, moved bro? on. That's like if you're, Who are you, bro? Yeah, if you're truly trying to like, say you're trying to do that, that's like, why wouldn't you just reply with the who are you, bro? When you quote tweet and then you're like thinking you're getting him back. Yeah. And then everyone, again, continues to body bag right. him. And Joe even comes back with another, with another body bag, bag, dude. It's like the little gift. He's dead. He's, He's dead. Like, you got to fight. Joe, you got his ass. Hold up. Kayvon, you lost that one. Yeah. And he brought up the four sacks. Oh. And then Kayvon comes back and goes, uh, I think he just subtweeted right out into the abyss. But Ooh. it was like, uh, I really didn't know who he was or something like that. Laugh out loud or something. It's like, okay, you're... N- you're not taking he's, the loss. He's well, doubling you, down on that, dude. You, you really doubled down Take on that. like a champ and like, move on. You made an attempt to try right. to say who are you, bro. You realize it did not work out the way you wanted it to. And so you, you had to default to the, right. I really didn't know who he was. It's like, oh, okay, if you're truly playing that game, then you would have Googled or something in the beginning. Yeah, you need to Google. You need to do a little bit of homework. And it's not like someone's talking to you where he says some shit to you and you have to think on your feet and go back, bro. You have the power of the internet. You can literally get any information you want. Yeah. You can literally look up his family members' names and use those. Yeah. There's a fucking low blow chirp, but you can at least use that For instead sure. of, bro, who are you? Have a, you can have a little fun. Have a little fun, dude. That's what it is. Cave on. Four sacks isn't great, bud, but it was a rookie year. It seems like you had a lot of good splash plays. Hopefully, you don't run into a sophomore slump like a lot of players do their second year. Let's not drink the Kool-Aid just yet. Let's keep ripping. Let's have a good offseason, and let's come back when you make a Pro Bowl next year and then reignite this flame against Joe. Because yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna let you in a little secret, buddy. If it's not for Joe Thomas, Joe Staley's a first ballot Hall of Famer, right? Joe Staley is a fucking stud and will be a Hall of Famer someday. He's a staple and already uh, an electrifying franchise. He's winning the battle of who's who in the zoo type of type yeah. of vibes. Let's he get back. Let, let, let's get back in the lab. Let's fucking grind it out. Let's put a good solid year of tape on there. Get yourself one of them Pro Bowls. Head over to Las Vegas and play some tic tac toe with the boys. Maybe a couple of dodgeball games while wearing the cool jerseys, having a good time wearing some glasses. And then once you do that. Then we can start chir- chirping Joe again. But Joe Staley, I'll give him one and know. He's one and know on that fight right and there, the, dude. Who are you, bro, with the dot, 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 too? Now, I will say, I like how Thibodeau plays a little villain because he was the one who did the Snow Angels next to uh, uh, Kirk. Nick <laughs> Foles, oh, was right? it Foles? Yeah, next to Foles, and then went over and did the night night. I like me a little villain play, similar to like Eli Apple. It's like you're just out there fucking swinging. You gotta be the most hated guy in the NFL. But. You do got it. You need to be a little bit more correct other than the who are you, bro? Right. Da, da, da. That was kind of, that was weak. That this was is weak. this is constructive criticism, buddy. We're not coming at you. We're just trying to help you. Another version of Eli Apple. <laughs> yeah. Another version of Eli. Yeah, yeah. For real. Like I don't little, understand why everybody hates him so much. I need to, people need to let shit. us know. He like talk shit. And for him not to be like an elite player, that's what people, that's the angle people try to come in. But it's like, you need those people and those stories, man. You gotta have the villains, dude. You gotta, you gotta have gotta the have gasoline, the you know what I mean? Yeah. And I agree with you. It's like all the, all the noise Cincinnati was talking the week leading up and not even the Bengals themselves, the city, the way that the city was talking about the Bengals. Even when I made, I put, I was like, I think the Bengals are going to win. I was like, fuck, this is not going to turn out well because you know the Chiefs, just like Travis Kelsey at the end, kept those fucking receipts. You know those boys took it personal. Outstanding. Chris Jones was like, see you guys at Burrowhead. Kelsey afterwards, know your role and shut your mouth, jabroni. Just fucking ready to go. That's 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 elite. That's how you play the game. <clears throat> yeah, we're 40 minutes into this thing. Let's do a quick ad read real quick. While we're doing this ad read, I know people like to skip over the shit. Don't skip over it, but do us a favor. Subscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe. And... Today is literally the last day you can get any of the Budweiser Bowtie merch. So please, God, go get that because once it's gone, it's gone forever. Let's talk about NASCAR. The Bush Light Clash at the Coliseum returns to LA on Sunday, February 5th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. More than 20 of the best NASCAR Cup Series drivers will compete on the quarter mile track. Was it say purpose built in less than 50 days? Purpose built in less than 50 days. I don't know why that sounds so confusing to me. Purpose built in less than 50 days. Purpose built in less than 50 days. Purpose built in less than 50 days. Kicking off NASCAR's 75th season, The Clash features a pre-race concert by Cypress Hill 
and a race break performance from Wiz Khalifa, dude. Tune into The Clash February 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern. I got confused there for the time for a second. I was like, man, it's, it's eight now? Hey, Wiz Khalifa's fire, dude. Fire. We got to get him on the pod. He would be big time. In high school. So are we a drunk? So are we smoke weed? That was a hitter back in high school, dude. We don't care who sees... Do you see Joey Bosa out there? That's a tough, that's another, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up next because that's another tough L. That's a very tough L. You know yeah. when you got to pull out the I'm fucking rich bitch card? Like you've yeah. lost. Like that's a tough. Really, the fact that it's like, man, you really got triggered like that. I know. Bro, you, Joey, you're so good at football. Yeah. You're so good at football and you are probably 1A, 1B with the Kelsey brothers as far as like. The, the Bosa brothers and the Kelsey brothers? Yeah, yeah, they're like the family, the NFL family that's going on in the yeah. NFLs. So. Buddy, like some little bitch ass Philly fan who literally scrounged up just enough change to sit in the nosebleeds is coming up to you chirping yeah, you. He actually said he could afford it. You he see, said he could afford it. Yeah, doing the chirp now at the Eagles fans. Uh, I'm, but I'm you saying you gotta respect the good Philly Eagles troll. You know you the know, Philadelphia yeah. fans fucking ripped, yeah, dude. I, 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 I am saying if your mindset is I'm gonna hit this dude with I'm rich, that's obviously where his mindset is. Like this dude barely got enough money to get these tickets. If that's the mindset, then just live with that, knowing like listen. This is a fan of a game that you play coming up to you trying to get something out of you. Just let that shit ride. Maybe dap the kid up and say, hey, good luck today, pussy. And like walk away. Hit him with the pussy, dude. <laughs> you hit him with the pussy real quick, dude. Everything gets a whole lot better. Because once you say, dude, yeah, I can do this because I can afford it because I'm rich. And also. No, what he's saying right here, he goes, are you filming this for your little butt buddies? Snapchat. <laughs> for your butt buddies on Snapchat. Like, that's funny. I, yeah, I was going to say, uh, that one, you kind of give that first round. You're kind of like, oh, that's funny. But then when he uh, goes he doubled down, else, Joey, you got that. Like, look at that. You fucking loser. Dude, I love the Bosa brothers. And his dad in the back, too, is such a legend, dude. He was at, he was in Miami for Rough and Rowdy. Well, yeah. When we signed with Barstool. Right. Like, the first weekend. Like, just chilling by himself. Now he's walking back in. The battle's over. He's yeah, up oh, and now God, he comes back. When you come look. back, dude, it's fucking tough. That monster finger, too. Jesus Christ. Yeah, dude. dude. Dude's got some fucking paws on him. But yeah, guy's got some serious mitts. Joey, he should have sniffed that troll out from the get go. Yeah. And especially he's walking. That's what, tw at least 20, 25 feet away. Joey, what do you, wait, what are you saying? When do you guys I, I play today? Know. You guys aren't playing today? Like, Joey's being a fantastic brother, dude. He's wearing another uniform from a different team to support his brother. I got the whole family around. His dad was a first round pick in the NFL. Dad, why don't you go and grab the collar real quick and say, hey, let it be. You know? Yeah. Just let that thing ride for a little bit. Or like when you're walking in there, you just turn around like, hey, what, what was that? <laughs> Yo. That really hey, that's that, that, the troll really got you fired up. Like you're in Philly. Like you should be embracing. Bro, you should know Philly goes dude. fucking hard. I think the fans were egg. They were egging other fans from the, uh, from the Niners. Right. And people egging probably think them, that's bro. classless, dude. I love that shit. You want to be a part of a fan base that is so fucking ruthless. Low-key other fans are scared to go there. Ohio State, Mitch. Yeah. Ohio State's a fan base just like that. Allegedly, if you have a Michigan license plate in the third weekend in November on Saturdays, your car's getting flipped over. You're getting that shit spray painted. That shit's getting egged. These are all just war stories I've heard from the past. But that is the kind of fan base you want to be around and be a part of. That's huge. Yeah, I, there's a part of me that wants Philly to win just to see the city burn. Yeah, it's a celebration. He'd go fucking you know I mean? crazy. It's yeah, it'll be like the ending scene of the Joker, dude. You're right. Because there's just cars going, people are hitting, they're just going crazy. Yeah. Masks are on, going fucking wild. Did, did you see streets last night in Philly? No. no. Videos like they like a thing they say is like grease the poles, so like people don't climb them. People were already like on top of the like the poles. They were on grease top the of poles. the bus stop things, like those little like where you sit and wait for the bus. They were, were breaking them. Like they were acting like they won the Super Bowl already, and they. they have it like they just got to it. I uh, know. I was hoping for a little bit of a mama mentality from one of the teams, but they're all so excited. I was hoping one guy like Pat Mahomes would be so stoic, like job, job finished. Don't think so. Job's not done yet. That's how, how Jalen and Devontae Smith are. Did, are they like that? Yeah. All right. Cause Jalen's trying to win. Yeah. Yeah. I, dude, hey, Jalen's story, like I'm a fan of Jalen, bro. Yes. I'm a fan of Jalen. The way the whole everything went down at Alabama, phenomenal Oklahoma quarterback. That's Oklahoma. That's for Oklahoma to claim. I, I don't like how Alabama tries to claim him. But uh, and then bro, you go, you quit on him, Alabama. Right? Go through yeah, go through the on adversity national on national TV, on national TV, on the biggest stage in college football. Yeah, Rich Eisen had a a, a great appreciation thread for uh, Jalen Hurts. But man, his story, the way he kind of went went through that adversity, going to Oklahoma, everything else, getting into the league when they had a top 
When did Wentz get drafted? Top three, top five? Yeah, top. Uh, yeah, okay. Was was it was the top ten? I thought it was like higher than that. Anyways, he comes to a he comes to an organization that they still had that Wentz mentality coming out of it because Wentz was coming off that injury. Hey, give him another year. You had the COVID year. Yada yada yada. And uh, second overall, so he was number two overall. But yeah, you you have you coming into an organization where you're not actually seen as the man yet, and you had a lot of people still riding for Wentz in that moment, but. To take over the way he has, bro, to take a man, like, you can tell he is a true fucking leader. Yeah. And, uh, like, he's, I'm a huge fan. I'm a massive fan of fucking Jalen Hurts. Man. Shout out the boy. Come on, Shout out the boy, Come on dude. Podcast. Come on the podcast. Come hang out with us, dude. Yeah. But no. I will be in Arizona next story. week. Yeah. It, they're going to be tough, bro. I mean, Jalen wheels and deals, and he's got pieces around him, and they are just fucking. Elite pieces. And well, you, you were saying it earlier, AJ and Devontae only combined for what 60 something yeah receiving yards? Catches 60 something yards i mean they were running it fucking down their throat over and over what i was taken back by was every time they got in a four by one formation whether it's bunch near gun you got trips near gun all of it they're loving just the boy running talks the ball. rpo they're just running the ball and they were getting gas bro and i'll say this the the trenches that philly has they fucking move the line of scrimmage big time they move the line of scrimmage. Similar like how you guys were in like 19 to where Derek was getting that two-yard head start going into it. Yeah. But they're like moving the line of scrimmage, bro. It was it was wild. That's an elite offensive and line. they just kept running the same shit. There's one series that the Eagles just got on the ball and flipped the card. They went, you know, they just, they literally just flipped the formation to the other side and ran the same play and fucking go down and score. <laughs> that's wild. That's I think that's going to be a, a big thing in the, in the Super Bowl too. Because Kansas City's offensive line, bro. Both Bengals and Kansas City had are just tough O lines right now. Bengals, Bengals. <clears throat> then the Bengals. I don't know, dude. I know on paper before the year started, people were high on the Bengals because that's what everybody was like. This is this is the area we need to fix going into next right. year. But for, they had a bunch of starters out as well for Joey B. Three, right? They had three starters out for the last two games, and the this this the squad they put together for the divisional game against the Buffalo Bills was running all the all over them. With with dudes that were backups, and they go to the AFC Championship game. Obviously, Chris Jones, which another incredible story, dude. This dude literally tells people he feels like he's the reason why they lost the AFC Championship last year. There was two sacks that got away from him at the end of the game that could have sealed that entire win. And then, in a true like storybook fashion, he gets the sack on that on that third down after they made like a third and seventeen a crazy fucking um, third down conversion to go in to what you think was going to be a game winning field goal for the Bengals. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, but I, yeah, but, uh, you gotta, especially with Mahomes on that ankle, like they can rush the passer over there in Philly. They can rush that passer. You know, Mahomes was fucking, uh, they were saying he was putting four to five hours in on that ankle all week, all week long. Like, man, tip of the cap to the boy. Yeah. Legend. Even though he, he was out there limping at times too, but, Bro, battling back on a high angle. Dude, that like one, that. he like rolled out to the left and then threw it and, and then it landed hobbling. right on his yeah. back foot. And he hops like three times, wincing in pain, and then fucking gets his, his funny little jog going. He's got a funny ass little jog. Yeah, he's got a funny little jog. Going. Yeah. And then that last play to get that little first down, when, ultimately when the penalty happened, boys was scooting for it. Like, that's fucking, that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. That's, like, that's like that warrior shit you see in movies. Like fighting for every yard, doing everything you can to will those boys to the Super Bowl, and, and they're fucking going, man. As fans of football, not the whole thing you have at Kansas City, just in, in general, the game we are about to watch in 13 days' time is going to be incredible. It's going to be worth every single dollar to go to that game, to watch it, to get to get together with the squad, have the barbecues, the chips and dip, everything. Sit there and watch elite football being played. Two elite teams yeah. going at it. And the and the sto- all the different stories. Um, <sighs> behind the Super Bowl with Andy Reid, the Kelsey brothers, everything, man. And they're talking more like, you know, the Philly, the Philly way, like the organization as a whole, taking the chance on building through the draft with Jalen Hurts, you know what I mean? Versus yeah. trading, going out there and making a big splash. You take a couple lumps or a, a, a year's worth of lumps. I forget how many, how many seasons they had where they weren't what they are now. But now they're back in the fucking Super Bowl. Because there's a stat too in the last, I think, it, what is it, like... uh last 20 years or all the teams that how many times they've went to the conference championship or the Super Bowl, it's like the Patriots and then the Eagles are up there. They're like the standard on how to build an organization. I wonder when the Patriots will be back. 
You don't think they'll be back? He says, I hope not. Mitch goes, I, I hope know, not. man. They, they, you, you need that. Bill Belichick. Tom Brady. Who's a better coach, Bill Belichick or Andy Reid? That's... Now we're getting into that. That's that's the argument we're getting into, especially if Philly or Kansas City wins this Super Bowl. Yeah, I think it depends. I mean, how many championships has Andy Reid won? Is it? Yeah, I think that's it's kind of hard to debate, right? Yeah, now. it is hard to debate. You're right. It's I thought like, he had more than that. Yeah, it's like uh, maybe, you know, if Mahomes wins this one, like obviously he'll be talked about with Tom Brady, and people will like argue that to the death because you know Tom's got all those Super Bowls. It's like he can't yet until he gets like that seven piece, right? Say five, right? Say Mahomes gets five. What would this be for Mahomes? Two. That's what I'm saying. It's almost like who's better, Tom yeah. Brady or Mahomes? Like, well, fuck, right now, like, recency bias, people, like, high on, like, Mahomes, Andy Reid. You forget what Tom's done for the yeah, game. Yeah, you kind of forget what Belichick and Tom were doing to the league for, like, a decade. Right? Wild. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Two decades. Yeah. 20 yeah. years. Yeah. Just yeah. literally, the, the Super Bowl went through Foxborough. Right. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. That was just the so You're norm. right. That, that, is, that is a too early uh, comment that I made there. Yeah. Who's better, Andy Reid or Bill Belichick? Bill Belichick is the GOAT. Yeah, he, he's, yeah, because remember, like, earlier in the year, too, I was like, uh... When do they rename when, the trophy? Rename yeah, the trophy I was just thinking about that. Yeah. When do they rename the trophy? But you have a down year, people forget, man. You have a down week or two, gambling on the sports book, people forget how successful you were throughout the season. Let's see, and that brings us back to hell, boys. We're in hell. Yeah, we are in hell right now. Um, should we hit the shout-outs? We should hit the, either the shout-outs or the, the episode we have today. Max Crosby. Fucking stud. We had the opportunity in Las Vegas, Nevada, to go to his beautiful home. He was very excited to show us his home. It's a beautiful home. Not only is the home beautiful, but the vehicles sitting outside of that home he were equally as incredible. Roll. Had food waiting for the boys, water, pizza, wing stop. Had a nice little setup. Uh, his dogs, he got three dogs. One dog is a horse. The dog's fucking massive. 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 Big was teddy it? bear, though. Big teddy bear. But he looks at you and you like literally put your fist up to it like near him, like to go pet him. You're like, he could just swallow my hand whole right now. Yeah. Like, thank God it's not an aggressive dog. Yeah. yeah. Thank God. Remember right, when I, remember right when I walked in, Max was like, just look straight. Like, don't look down and react to him. And I, like, walk in the front door, and I'm just... Stiff as a board. Like, fucking right up here to me, and I'm just, like, fucking scared to that. He's he like, said, I'm just fucking with you, man. But, but it, it, it was great. We talked about his process, how he takes things. Uh, there is a big... There'll be some goosebumps in this episode. Yeah. The way he talks about his process, how he takes things, puts the chips on his shoulders, and keeps moving forward... You know, I don't think we talked too much about the sobriety struggle at all because I think you guys have gone over that before. Yeah, in the first episode yeah. when he came on the bus, he talks about that story a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's a very well, it's out there. It's out there for people. If you want to go check out the first episode I did with Max, he's got, there's articles written on yeah. it. Yeah. And low key, I, this is my first time meeting Max, but knowing Will and uh, Max's relationship and then, you know, me and Max like speaking to each other via like social media and then Will, what he has to say about him. I feel like I literally knew Max. Like we were dabbing him going, yo, this is the first time we've ever met. Yeah, he's a good dude. He's a good dude. We played pig after. I'm not going to tell you who won, but it went, it went well for a little bit. For a little bit, bro, it went well. What was other Duncan? Did you see him Duncan on the internet? Oh, yeah, week? I saw that. And I literally thought to myself, this is exactly what he wanted people to see. Yes, yeah, he's, like, oh, he's so happy. When he was getting warmed up, get, yeah. putting his socks and shoes on, he's like, oh, there's a camera out here? Perfect, dude. Yeah. He needed people to know. Yeah. He needed to bring down the house with these boys. Yeah. Just a, just a fucking grinder, dude, who gets after it. Seems like an outstanding leader, too. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave Ziegler and the, and the, uh, Las Vegas Raiders are very lucky to have him. The guy's a fucking grinder. Mm -hmm. Talks about the Derek Carr situation just a little bit. Um, you know, the, his the all process. Pro the, the all pro, the all pro stuff. stuff. The all pro. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a phenomenal podcast in and in a cool setting, too, because he's in the comfort of his own home. Every once in a while, I hear his newborn baby up there crying. His wife is incredible. They, he's got a good thing going over there in Las Vegas. One thing we talk about, too, that I was interested in was the process of what it could possibly be like being a rookie going to Las Vegas, Nevada to play in the NFL for the first right. time. I mean, that's got to be crazy. Like, that's got to be so hard. All those, there's a lot of temptation out there. A lot of temptation. A lot temptation. of bells and whistles going on. A lot of bells and whistles. Keeping guys focused on what's what. Yeah, a lot of ways to get caught up, especially like, you know, not that Nashville doesn't have stuff too, but the two places are just so different. Yeah, so different. Yeah. Literally, their phrase is yeah. what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yeah. Like, like, if you were to go to the Buffalo Bills, if you're there as a rookie compared to if you're a rookie in Vegas, yeah. very two different worlds. Very different. Very, very different. But it was good, though. He talked some shit, too, which you always got to respect and enjoy. Which is nice. Which is very, very nice. Uh, with that being said, should we do shout-out, no-free shout-out? I think so, brother. All right, listen. 
Uh, shout out, no for shout out, this week, uh, to save time to get you to the Max, Cros Max Crosby episode, we are going to Ixnay the Boys, and just me and Will are going to go. This segment is going to be sponsored by Whistle Pig Whiskey, uh, specifically Bars. the Bustin' with the Boys Whistle Pig Whiskey. Now, you're probably wondering, what am I going to taste when I get in there? You're going to put that You're going to put that thing up to your lips. You're going to sip it a little bit. A little bit of heat up front, like a cracked pepper type vibe, right? Like, ooh, what is that? As it slowly goes down your throat, it's going to feel like a hammock, slowly drifting you in the wind on a hot summer day. And as you start to feel cozy and comfortable, it's going to go down to the stomach and and sit so nicely on the top of that tummy, buddy. You're gonna be feeling good for two to three hours. I promise you, you're gonna like what you taste. With that being said, let's do shout out, no free shout out. I'll go first, except for the fact that I have completely forgot mine. So, Will, you you are going to go first. Mine is uh, this is a good time. Hmm. Mine is simply a well timed fart. When you hit a well timed fart, like. You know, and I just said it well time when you get that perfectly timed fart, whether you're with your boys, you know, maybe with your girl, who knows? I don't know what, what rattles your cage with that one. But when you're around the boys and somebody has a well timed fart, bro, there's you just have a good laugh. Like it's a good chuckle. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's even more than a chuckle, but the vibes surrounding a well timed fart, especially when you, when you got a lot of people too. Yeah. Maybe it gets a little quiet, you know, you romp it a little bit. I don't know. I just a, a good fart goes a long way you with do, me. You do. You got some good gas. Yeah. You got some yeah. good time gas. Yeah. A good fart goes a long way with me. Yeah. So that's my shout out. No free shout out. I think another one we need, need to throw in there. That's a shout out. No free shout out. And that is, if you are listening right now, today is our last day to the buy that Busweiser merch with that mm. little Budweiser bow tie tag that we kind of collab with Bus with the boys. We got the C and D. We're off the Busweiser merch. It is the last day to own a piece of history. So if you want one, go to the site store.barstoolsports.com dot com store dot barstool sports dot com yeah and then uh you know go to the bus with the boys merchandise that, that was a good shout out no free shout out my shout out no free shout out goes to the anticipation of a first kiss you're Ooh. with the individual you might be on a first date second date even a third date and you guys are playing the limbo of who's who what are we going to be what is this going to turn into? And you're hoping you got your little, you can feel your heart beat in your throat as you lean closer and closer. Me personally, I'm a horribly timed kissing individual. I get so nervous. I get so caught up in it. I kind of like almost ask sometimes, like, hey, can I kiss you? Yeah. Like, okay. I got a boner right now. You might have yeah, yeah. we kiss. Like, low key, there's blood flow everywhere but my head. I don't know how to focus on this type of situation. So that perfectly timed, you're sitting there. Maybe it's a, uh, it's a what, what's that movie with the two dogs are eating the spaghetti? Lady and the Tramp, dude. Mm. Maybe you guys are both eating one long strand of spaghetti and you slowly just move closer and closer and things just time up perfectly. The heartbeat's going so crazy. You, can, you can't even really gather what's going around around you. It's just you and that other individual. You slowly lean in and those lips touch for the first time. Buddy, what a fucking moment. You never get another one. You never get another first kiss. So my shout out, no free shout out goes to the first kiss. Ooh, that's solid, brother. Thanks, brother. That's a good one. I appreciate that. One. With that being said, boys, like Will said... Today is the last day you can buy the bow, bow tie Budweiser merch. We're going to do a full push tomorrow on Twitter to make sure you guys know anybody who's today. Anybody. Okay. Today's the last day. Today, yeah. Sorry, we're, we're filming. Yep. It's Monday. Yep. Anyway, we're going to do our fucking best, all right? With that being said, Will's going to read this uh, ad from Blue Nile Inc. And then we are going to cruise you right into the Max Crosby podcast. Speaking of first kiss, oh. Valentine's Day is coming up, which means romance is in the air more than usual. Mm. That blood's flown a little lower more than usual. Whether you're celebrating this day of romance or whether you're ready to pop the question, you can find jewelry as unique as she is with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. Their simple online tools let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity as well as the setting style. Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft the perfect piece to your specifications. Blue Nile provides expert guidance because a lot of times when you're, when you're a gentleman and you're in there, you kind of don't know where to go. Hey, I need some direction. They provide expert guidance, in-depth educational materials, and unique online tools that place you in control, boys. So you can forget the usual hassles of the jewelry shopping process and focus on the romance. Every order is insured and arrives quickly in discreet packaging. That way it won't give away what's inside. She won't question what's going on. She'll just think it's some random little package. Shipping is free and so are the returns. Right now, you can save up to 50% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com for up to 50% off from the boys for the boys to that little special someone. BlueNile.com. 
This is the Max Crosby episode. Have a ball. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Bus with the Boys. Obviously, we are not on the bus right now. We are in a pristine location. Unknown. In, unknown in Las Vegas, Nevada, at the home of the legendary Max Crosby. And yeah. if you're at home right now, go ahead and give him a round of applause. We'll do it too. Appreciate oh, you guys. Buddy, this is an outstanding place. I appreciate it. Yeah. When, did you, uh, it. when did you move into this residence? Uh, we moved in in May. Yeah. Uh, I lived about three minutes away before, um, and me and Rachel were looking at houses for a long time, and it was a very stressful, look at Brooklyn, very stressful situation. You know, we're going back and forth arguing. I'm done, you know, I'm, I, I was at the point where I'm like, I'm done looking at houses. Like, until I get my contract, like, I'm done. And then all of a sudden, my boys come in town, we're going to the UFC event that weekend, and Rachel's like, there's this one house, we got to see, you know, whatever. I'm like... I'm done. I'm seriously, I'm done. I'm done looking at houses. She pulls me in the car. We're going. We drive around the Lost corner. That battle. And that was it. We literally put an offer on this house that, that same day. So. Really? And this this house. So, yeah. There is like a, a weird that transition. Bag was what's that? I said he knew that bag was coming. He knew yeah. the bag was coming. The bag was coming. But when the bag's not secured yet, yeah. you do start playing the game of like, man, well, I wonder what I could get. And you start... You get on the Zillow yeah. app and you're oh, looking yeah. at the things. All right, this is what I can get right now. But if I get this contract, I could go and get that and that. Hundred percent. It's, it's a crazy game you play in your head. Yes, it's the best though. It was was, was it that was... like a, a stressful time for you, like before contract stuff was like? Um, I wouldn't say stressful. Like it was honestly like a good stress. Like, you know the situation. Like it's hard. You don't know, like, you want to get to your number. Like you're really hell bent. Okay, on this, boom. I'm not going below this. Um, but then in the situation, like when it really came down to it, I, you know, you're never going to get exactly what you want. Um, but at the end of the day, like I got enough where I don't have to, you know what I mean? I don't have to worry about money anymore. So like, that's the ultimate goal. Um, but it's, you know, for me, it's not really about the money. Like my, my, I've always heard from coaches, everything, like they're like the second contracts, what the NFL is all about. And for me, like, I've always thought about like I always try to do above and beyond. Like, I, I, my goal is to get a third contract. Like, I want to be the highest paid um, in a few years. Like, that's, that's my ultimate goal. So, like, this contract was a big deal for me. Like, I'm set. But at the end of the day, like, I want to reset the market. So, like, that's, like, my goal for sure. How One long, of my goals. How long are you want to play? 12, to, probably 12 to 13. Just depending. I, I honestly don't know. But, like, I don't, like we just talked about, I don't ever want to step on the field and feel like, like not like myself. Like that's when I'll know. Like if I get to that point, I'm 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 be done. Because there are, there are players that like young, when they're younger in their career, they play super hard. Like we were we were in the car uh, driving here, and like the adjective I think we used for you was like, dude, you play relentless. You play hard. And when sometimes when dudes play that hard, it, that puts some wear on the tires. And then dudes get older and they have to change up their game a little bit. And you're not you don't want to sacrifice that. No, no. You know, honestly, I've <laughs> I've always kind of had that mindset like ever since I you know started playing football like I truly believe there's only one way to play and yeah if I if I'm playing and being cautious about jumping in piles and things like that like I probably shouldn't be playing and um yeah like I just want to look back at my career and be like yeah he put a great body of work I don't want the last thing they remember is like my old ass trying to bend the edge and falling over and stuff like that's the last thing I want you know for me I I, I really want to go out on my terms because there's most guys don't and that's kind of the hard thing about this business like I you know I'm not in control I don't know you know what's going to happen in the future but like I know the preparation I put into it I do everything I can to try to be at my best and be able to play that way so um you know that's kind of my my long-term goals but I'm just literally just trying to stay in the present that's it yeah it's almost like how do you know you know what I mean like if you're if you that's end a on a, if you end on a high note right yeah. the competitive nature in everybody is you continue to go. It's like, I don't feel like you would actually find out if you've lost a step unless you had a, a year where it's like, oh, damn, maybe maybe I don't have it like I did the year before, a year prior. So it's almost like, <laughs> how do you know? Because you're almost you're also addicted to all the success as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, how do you feel like you would know? I don't know. I feel like... Like his that, old that's ass a great bending. question. It's like his old ass bending around the edge. I feel like that wouldn't happen unless it's like week 15 of maybe your last season and you're like, fuck, maybe I am slowing down. Yeah. No, that, that's, that's true. You never, like, I feel like you're never going to know, like, exactly. But 
It's just like like JJ. Like I feel like it's a mental thing too. Like you know when you're done. Like there's guys like I feel like there's certain like even I know Sean McVay. Like I don't know the, all the story, but like I know how he works and people talk about his work ethic. Like he's like when he's in it, like twenty four seven. He's twenty four seven. He doesn't stop. And like people are saying he might take a break. And there's rumors of that just because of how he is. So like. If I ever get to that point where I'm like sick of it and like I'm really not enjoying it and I'm, you know, I'm at that point where it's like, I'm, you know, I've already, I've given everything I got to it. Like it's time to just, you know, call it a career. Like I know, I, I feel like I'll know when that day comes. Like even JJ Watt, like you've seen, he's balling. Like he had just had 12 and a half sacks this year and he's just like, I'm done. But he knows, he kind of hit that limit. He played what, 12 years? Yeah, like but that's look, at, kinda, look, at, look at Tom Brady. Yeah, but. It's different though. Like he's he's not taking big yeah, hits no, and running no, no, and no, no, putting no, his no, shoulders no. and shit. So like that's different. Like I feel like especially playing up front, you know, Taylor, like it's a lot and it's every single day in practice. Like a quarterback's not taking any damage during the week. They're not doing it during the off season. Like we do it all the time, all year round. So yeah, like my goal, like there's there's main goals I wanna hit. Like I wanna be the Raiders all time sack leader. Like that's something that's like big on my checklist. Like there's a lot of things that I want to hit before I'm done. So yeah, I, you know, I'm just going to stay in the present. That's all I can do. But when that, when that day comes, I feel like I'll know. What is the all time sack leading? I think it's 107 and a half, Greg Townsend. Mm. So you're yeah. at a hundred sacks <laughs> year 10, eight. Yeah. Let's say, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say you're at a hundred sacks year eight, but you're losing a step, but Ooh. you need seven sacks to get that all-time sack. Do you come back the next year to get to check your boxes where you feel like you're close? You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's different. Like, if I'm in year eight and I feel like I'm losing a step, then maybe I'm not doing something right. You know what I mean? Like, maybe. If that, that's or just... you leave, you're so fucking relentless all the time. Like, maybe, you know. Nah, that's, I'm still young, bro. Like, I'm 25. And I've, I'm going into my fifth year. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm not, if, like, just looking at it from, like, there's, you look at the Kobe's, the guys like that, like they work relentlessly. They were able to play 20 years. I know it's a different sport, but like even the NFL guys, like I know injuries are, injuries happen. Like that's a part of it. But, you know, I feel like if you do all the right things, you take care of your body, do sleep well, recover well, do all the shit right, you practice right, keep keep ahead of things, like you'll be fine. And and that's how, like I, I played almost 1,100 snaps this year. Like I played a, a ton of snaps, but like I feel good. Like... I could go, I could start training tomorrow if I really wanted to, but I have to force myself to slow down. So, like, I'm not fucking stupid. I don't think, like, I'm above other people. And I don't, you know what I mean? That's not how I look at it. But, like, I just, I feel like um, if I just keep doing the right things, bro, yeah. I'll be able to kind of control my destiny in a way. I was more trying to give a hypothetical of you're slowing down, but you're also right there on the cusp of a couple of those check, check you boxes. Go and get oh, that. I'm, I'm going and get like yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm like going to get that. I'm going to play one year, and if I go and have four sacks, then okay, yeah. it's time. But, like, I'm a, yeah, I'm a definitely. Because, yeah, 107, you're right. It, I guess it would be like, you know, it wouldn't be like year 12 or 13 where. Yeah. Where no, you at now? for sure. 30, 37 and a half. Okay. That's pretty all right. What are other goals on that? What are, what are other goals on that list? Um, There's that. Oh, my bad. Uh, Put it to your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, a, there, there's a few. Like, the, like I want to be in the Hall of Fame. That's something I, I want to be in. I want to be the Raiders' all-time sack leader. Um, you know, I, th there's there's a lot of things. I, I can't say everything, but, like, there's, like, the main goal is, like, I want to be, definitely do that. But I want to I wanna have a career where... Like, when people look back, like, the biggest thing for me, like, the numbers and shit is cool. Like, the jacket, all that shit's cool. But, like, my main focus is, like, trying to impact the way the game is played. Like, I feel like in the NFL now, there's a, there's only a few guys that you really look at and are like, damn, he's just fucking, he's different. I don't know what it is. Like, just the way he plays. Like, I watch, like, Chris Jones and, like, a Micah Parsons and those guys, like, they're just something different when they're out on the field. Like, it's like a presence. And, like, that's what I want to leave back. Like, when people look back and talk about me, they're not going to talk about the stats. At the end of the day, they don't talk about Lawrence Taylor's sacks. They talk about when that dude is on the field, he's a fucking animal. And, the like, and that's, that's, that's the way I look at it. Like, inspiring kids. <laughs> yeah. Inspiring kids. Like, I want to be that guy that kids want to be like. Like, I wanna, that's, that's what matters most to me. So if it's six years and I feel like I'm losing a step, like, then it is what it is, like, and, I, and I'll know I'm done. But, like, at the end of the day, like, I feel like the impact I leave on the game, like, I want to be, I want to bring that back, like, the old school way of playing football, flying to the ball, not giving a shit, like, throwing my body. Like, that's, 
that's what I feel like is missing nowadays, for sure. Mm. What from an inspiration standpoint, when you were playing uh, at Eastern Michigan, of all places, in Ypsilanti, which is wild. Like we, we, we need yeah. to unpack like how you went there. <laughs> wild but, shot at the boys in red. Sorry, I couldn't help. It I goes can't. way better than Nebraska. Oh, oh man, well, couldn't help myself <laughs> until this year. Until we're this coming, year, no, we like coming. when you're when you're playing, like obviously the first person that comes to mind, somebody you've already mentioned like two or three times, is JJ Watt. Was that like your guy at um, Eastern? No, not at Eastern. I, I liked. I was a big JJ fan. Like when I first started playing DN, like my first year playing DN was I was a senior in high school. So I was new to the position. I'm like, what, what, who's the best at what I do? So like JJ at that time was like Superman. So I definitely, I, I like watching JJ, but there's a ton of guys. Like I love Jared Allen growing up. Um, there's a, there's a ton. Like, and it's not just defensive ends. Like I played growing up, I was a middle linebacker the whole time until my senior year. So like, you know, I could go on and on about different players, but yeah, I, I watch everybody, and I just I want to be like unique, like somebody not just another guy, another hard working. Like I want to be somebody that look back is like, damn, like in that time, like this dude was just different than most dudes. Yeah, because JJ was one of those dudes who like fought through the fringe. Yeah. Like when I first got to Tennessee, I was like, that was when JJ was was JJ. It was yeah. terrifying. <laughs> yeah. And then you know he went through like a three four year spell where he like played six games, played nine games, like didn't really play a whole lot. And he could have easily been where uh, we've been, what we've been talking about was like, is he losing a step? Yeah. And he goes back to the Cardinals. And like you said, he had 12 sacks this year. Yeah. But Loki was balling this year. It's that competitive. Balling. I feel like it's like a, that competitive fire. Like also the fight of yeah. being like, this can't be the end for me. Like right. I need yeah. to make this comeback real. 100%. But you're in it though. Like you're in your own, like some people could objectively say like, maybe you are losing a step, but I guess only you know, but then that's obsession of being so uber competitive. Maybe you don't necessarily know it, but you keep going back. Right. For sure. And that's the thing, too, guys, like the game, you evolve like over time, like the, especially like even if some guys are a little bit older, that's the thing, too. Like my game is from my rookie year to now, it's like polar. You know what I mean? I've gone. It's not even like the same person when I watch my film. So even I feel like it's when you get older, too, like you see a guy like this. I always refer to the NBA, but like you see James Harden, like he used to be dropping 40 a game every night. And now he's a like a pass first he's leading the league in assist because he's lost a step but he's also like Adapted. the best passer yeah, yeah. in the league now and he's just evolved as a player so yeah I feel like that's the thing like I have this vision of what I want my right. ending to look like and how it's going to be but like I truly don't know like I, I really don't know I just I just try to stay stay in the day bro and and the, if I can maximize every day and do what I do, like it's just gonna work out the way it's supposed to. You know, it's not that's not under my control. What's yeah. it like? Go no, ahead. No, you're right. I was gonna uh, switch the subject, but if you're staying on, that, no, I was ahead. just I was playing to like everyone. Everyone really has this. Like everyone's writing their own little story in their head, and they're yeah. like they're narrating their own story. Like if I do this, like it's gonna yeah. look like this, and like you're literally watching yourself daydream of how it's all gonna end. Everyone plays it out, and you're right. Like a lot of dudes can't go out on their own terms. Yeah. Like a lot of people, like uh. Like for me, two ACLs in three years, it's like I was on top of the world before that. And yeah. I thought, oh man, I'm getting this jacket. Like we're gonna keep going. Oh yeah. And things just switch up on you. Mm -hmm. and you have to learn to pivot and be happy with what you've done. Yeah, 100%. What's it, uh, what's it like being Brian Balding or is one of his favorite players? I feel like my <laughs> man is always shouting you out because of what you talk about, the impact on the game. I feel like he does a great job of, of, of uh, spotlighting that and showing that, the Commodore. Whether or not you're getting the stat of a sack, the way you affect the game, yeah. uh, what's it like like having a legend like that talk about you multiple times throughout the year? Yeah, it's awesome. You know, ever since my rookie year, for some reason, like my first game that I really got to play in was the Indianapolis game. Um, I think it was week four of my rookie year. And um, he put a video out and he made up the Condor nickname and all this stuff. And I was like thrown off. I'm like, damn, like I didn't he realize. He's juicy. He narrates that stuff yes, good. Like he's got some fire little yeah, comments. The yeah. comment, the whole thing is classic. So it's like when he first started doing that, um, like I reached out back to him and was like, man, I was like, I appreciate it. It means the world. And then, you know, I just, as my career's gone, he's always doing videos. And now like, we'll talk like before, you know, after a game, I'll be like, Go watch, go watch what I did on this third down, boom, and he'll check it out and be like, and we'll just have conversations yeah. back and forth. He loves football. Oh, he's loves pushing the Commodore narrative. Yeah. Bro, yeah. Is, he loves football, bro, yeah. and that's that's the type of people I like to like to associate myself with. So, you know, like Marinelli and those guys, like those, I talk to Marinelli to this day every day. Like, you he, just I was, visit him, didn't I you? I was just saw him in Texas. I was just on the phone with him like two hours ago. Like he's one of those guys that, 
like I need in my life to keep like everybody has those people, especially like in your sport that you like just have a different level of respect for. And like Baldy and like Marinelli, those guys, like I constantly, even when I'm not training, like right now, like I have a couple of weeks to kind of get off my feet, like just I need it. Like I, I, it's my part of like my addiction. Like I, I love playing football. So having those guys just talk ball and, and just feed me knowledge is, is really cool. How do you get the Commodore nickname? The Condor. Condor, actually. excuse the, me. Yeah. Did I say Commodore? <laughs> did you, say, a, did you uh, say Commodore? I think I said Commodore. <laughs> what is a Commodore? I Isn't no that like I a, don't know. That's, yeah, oh, Vanderbilt. that's right. Yeah. Vanderbilt, anchor down, dude. It's, it's similar. I mean, yeah, similar okay. schools. Um, yeah, how'd you get that nickname? It was just from Baldinger. I, I think it was... That wingspan? Um, yeah, I guess the wingspan. Like, you do I, have like a, a, sol a solid caveman, like... Knuckles touching knees, my dear. <laughs> See, it's the, like, that's a big, that's a big compliment. The knee no. that little fucking, you got them. Them things are flying too when you're playing. Yeah, bro. I've I've heard a lot of different weird names. You don't names need to hear. You arms. watch your film. You see them arms. No, the, the, you're touching yeah. the right guard when you're playing the left tackle. <laughs> See, that's the funny thing, bro. Like, and this is weird, and y'all y'all can believe me or not, but when I went to the combine, I'm like, you know, everyone's always told me that, like, bro, you got long arms, like you're a long athlete. I went to the combine. I was like almost the bottom when it came to wingspan. No. They were like, I swear to God, they had articles, ah, the Eastern Michigan, because like I did good at the combine, so people started talking about me more. But they're like, yeah, I don't know, his wingspan's short and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, wait, what? Was what? Your, what was your, uh, it your was arm like, length? It was like 6'10 wingspan. I don't know my arm length. It was like. How tall are you? 6'5". Oh, I think it's a dub, right? I'm if your sure, wingspan's you longer know, than your boy, I ain't no, that's what you. Yeah, was, you got them stubby. Oh, you got the yeah, T-Rex. My wingspan's shorter. The wheel does have that like stocky, like he walks. Wrestler belt. <laughs> yeah. Bro, he just yeah. put his hands yeah. in his pockets to relax. Yeah. You gotta pull his shoulders no. way down yeah. to get I'm them like, hands I'm on I'm trying him. to hit that ball the other day in the shop, and I like can't. I like can't get it started. I can't get the ball. I'm like, fuck! I gotta kind of bounce the ball a little bit. You do got them little stuff, but they make your arms look bigger though. That way, like if you have real long arms, your arms don't look as big. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know. People, it's weird, bro. They people say in the gotta, football world would always tear me down. You must have a small it. torso, as we as right? we're dissecting your body. There's gotta be something wrong. You probably I think got I, a small torso. Yeah. Yeah. I think I got <laughs> wide shoulders that make my arms seem longer. I don't know. I bet you got no <laughs> fucking wingspan out there, dude. Yo, that's hilarious. I don't know. It's Was, weird. Uh, okay, Eastern Michigan. Yeah. Like, how did you end up there? It's funny you, you brought this up. So I, yesterday, my D line coach from Eastern called me. And he, uh, you know, we're just chopping it up, talking, talking ball and whatever. And somehow he brings it up. He's like, yeah, you know, you know, it's hilarious. You know, we, we've been interviewing um, a new D-line guy because he's going to move to linebackers there at Eastern and not, they're getting a new D-line coach. And he was like, Coach Creighton, my head coach, he's, he started this thing in, in his interview process. He puts up five high school players film and shows the D-line coaches and has them rank the, the D-linemen. He puts like... Whatever, one of the guys they're trying to recruit, he puts my film in there from my high school, like when I was in high school, and he puts like, you know, four other random guys. He said, so my D-line coach, my old D-line coach told me yesterday, he said every single coach ranks me at like fourth or fifth from high school no tape. way. And I'm dying laughing. And they don't know that it's you, though, They don't right? know. They and just... then they're like, yeah, you know, that's Max Crosby, right? And they're like, and they all get awkward. Yeah, but that's like, got to be a talk deal. It's just awkward. You, but... you just got to sit there in that meeting and go, I'm not getting this job. Yeah, anyway. I'm yeah. fucked. It's over. But that's that's kind of like, bro, I was a late bloomer. Like, I was a I was a linebacker all the way up to my senior year. Then we got these new coaches, and I had a big growth spurt. But, like, my body, I wasn't caught up, like, Bro, my knees were hurt and I was slow twitch as fuck. Like, if you watch my high school film, you'd be like, yeah, I'm not surprised you went to Eastern. Like, I was surprised I got a D1 offer. They were the only D1 to offer me, bro. They're really? My, they're my only offer in general. So, like, I got that offer. I jumped on it, committed, and boom. And then, yeah. The were you a basketball guy? Yeah, I played basketball. You were a beast, huh? Yeah, I could, I could hoop. I could no hoop easy buckets. Bit. Nah. You I, play in the paint? I was I was like a swing, you know like a, a stretch four kind of guy. I could shoot I could shoot the ball. Come on. I swear to God, I would I rather shoot than be on the block. Come like on. I'm not a back hey, to the on. basket hey, guy. Come on. I'm catch the ball at the top, You're move, get guy. to the lane, hammer You're a that. You're paint guy. Absolutely not. You can't. Dribble. I could rebound, but like I'm not back to the basket, old school George Mike and type shit. Come on. Can you dribble? Well. I'm not gonna hype can myself up, but I've I the Serbian, my mom's Serbian is it's translated to the court. Can you do the dribble between your legs? Can you dunk? I could win. Can you do the thing? We go you, right there, and I'll win. Can you do there for oh, the pool? The pool? I'm talking about the other hoop. We have a court back there. Is it even regulation? It's probably eight feet. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be eight feet. 
Can you do the thing where you bounce the ball and you pick your shirt up and the ball goes in and you slap it and it goes around? And one mixtape? Yeah. I don't think I can do that. You think you're the best basketball player on the Raiders? Yeah. I think guys would tell you that too. Really? I'm not going to hype myself up, but we've all played together. I see you over there getting a little, you keep like twitching a little bit. I can get wiggly. Yeah. yeah, Like you're a little triggered that we're kind of questioning your basketball. Yeah, Yeah. it hurts. But it's, it's normal for, you know, being a white guy. They will always question you at first, but then you go on the court and you fucking hammer That's why you had to get yatted everywhere. It changed. Yeah, it changes. Yeah, dude. You yeah. you are you are tatted. Is uh, <laughs> what's it like playing defense being white? Is that tough? Um, I remember when Taylor called you. Oh, he's just another normal white guy out there on the field. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, Will told me that story. I forgot that even happened. Explain that story. Hurt my feelings. Hurt my feelings. <laughs> no. What, what happened that day? Because well, I, I don't remember when saying that to you. <laughs> you remember. No, I really don't. You, my told whole me, focus, you told me. My whole focus in that game was uh, you. Yeah. When we were playing you the Raiders. You, you literally told me. We were pulling up. And you're like, hey, was Max the guy where I said, uh, look, it's just another white guy. No, but here. I, yeah, yeah, because you told me that story. But I don't remember in the moment saying that. I just remember him saying that to you. Well, we finally got you guys here together. Max will let me down on, like, how much money? I think I, oh, wait, no, no. I was telling you I'll give you $200 per sack you got on Taylor. It was something like that, yeah. They run a and lot it of didn't pl- work. They, hey, I got the Titans back this year, though, so I was proud. And I let Vrabel know about it. Did you really? Yeah. What did you I, say to I Braves? was talking the whole game. He was just sitting there on the sideline with his hands <laughs> on his knees. And after, y'all tried to run that weird reverse boot shit, and I just fucking great, jetted. We had great play calling. Yeah, it was like on a third down, and I just jetted, smoked Tannehill, and I looked to the sideline, Vrabel was just looking. <laughs> he was right there. I was like, stop running that shit at me. Stop running that shit. And he's like, okay, shaking his head and shit. Nah, that's, that's a Vrabel. He's yeah. like, oh, yeah. oh, okay. Right. Right. But I fuck with Vrabel, bro. He's one of those coaches. This is random off topic, but he like he texts me all the time. He's cool as shit. He was my mm. coach of the Pro Bowl last year. Max Crosby of the Titans. He's, he's playing he's, the he's long a good game. Dude. Yeah. You got to respect that. That third hey, contract. You just got to build relationships. You never yeah. know what's Bring you to come. Nashville with the boys. I don't know about that, but... You would look fantastic in two-tone blue. You never know. You never know. You but yeah, the, I'm you happy where I'm at. You'd join the boys in that show, wouldn't you? Hey, if they didn't want me here anymore, yeah, of course. But I think uh, I think it's going to work out just fine. Dude, uh, Vrabel, like, you don't know Vrabel like we know Vrabel because he'll go in meetings like on Wednesdays and Thursdays yeah. and pull up tape and just – Dummy guys, yeah. like just verbally assault them. And we, I remember we playing. <laughs> I think it was that your rookie year we played in Oakland. Yeah, that's when we played each other. Yeah, he would put you on the film, and he there wasn't really a bad thing because you play hard. Yeah, and he, there wasn't a bad thing. But he's like this loud mouth motherfucker, <laughs> like just like <laughs> circling. Him, was like this guy, he can't fucking touch the quarterback. Fuck this guy, like going off about you the whole that. time. Yeah. And that's got to be a great feeling. Because I've had the same that's thing respect, with, like, with like Bill O'Brien, and Bill O'Brien be like, hey, seventy-seven, he's a fake tough guy. And yeah. that, that hurt every time. Yeah, remember every time. remember Gunther in the, the defensive meeting that week? What did he it say? Was like the, it was like what the same kind of stuff. Similar, He's yeah. just a talker. He's going yeah, yeah. to try to get in he's your He's going to try to chirp you the whole time. Yeah. It's funny, but that's like I, I have, you know, how the NFL is. You have friends on all different teams. You know a bunch of guys. Like, that's the funniest shit when you sit there and talk after the season. And they're like, yeah, in our meeting, you know, we circled you. And just kind of hearing what other teams have to say about you, you're like, that's interesting. You know, everybody has their own kind of perspective on who you are as a guy. Like, yeah. There's some teams that think I'm the biggest piece of shit on the planet. Like, really? Of course. Like, Bro, he's, he's so loud. I'm loud. And he, he, loud. when he makes a play, he's like, I'm showing like what, it. motherfucker? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't help myself. I love it. Like, I'm loud. But that's, like, there's, there's certain teams that you could tell, like, they, they're trying to fuck me up. Like, the Niners team, like, the Niners coach and all them, they, like, butter me up all week. They're like, man, besides Bosa, he's, you know, he's probably the best guy. Once we got to the game, they tried to send the fucking house at me, bro. They were really? doing, t- bro, just different weird, like, the Niners blocking, like, the schemes and shit they do, I've never experienced anything like it. Like, bro, they were tackle, tight end, both going down, and the guard would fucking, like, they were coming at angles. I, you didn't even know where the fuck they were coming from, bro. It was just different. But, like, that's the thing. Like, that's the coolest thing about the league is, like, being in a position, you know how it is. Like, you're on an island the whole game. You don't even have to worry about it. So, like, that's your responsibilities. For me, it's the opposite. I know they're going to be sending shit at me. And it's, like, it's a different type of challenge every week. And all the offensive coordinators, they all got a different way of approaching it. And it's, it's cool because after the games, they'll talk to me. Like, yeah, we're trying to fuck you up. And we're trying to do this. And blah. I'm like, oh, you got me on this. But I fucked you up on that play. Yeah. So, it's cool, man. That's, that's, what, that's what the league's all about. Dude, Kyle Shanahan's... So good. He's I was stud, watching bro. uh their 
first playoff game, and the the blocking seams are wild. Wild, bro. Like there was, what was the play? Oh, they like the tight end like went out on the uh, the end and then like flashed the end as if he wasn't like he was gonna block him. Then went away. Then Trent was there. That was when McCaffrey had like that long like fifty five yard yes. run. Yes. But the the blocking scheme was just so unique and it's simple. Yes. Because you look at it from an offense line, like, oh, they're just running this play with like these two little different things. Yeah. But they do such a good job of opening up holes. Yes. They no, are, it's, they got studs all around. I them was gonna too. say, yeah, that helps as well when you got fucking Everybody. like between Debo and McCaffrey, like those in open field, there's probably there's not, you can't name anybody really better than them. Like you got Tyreeks and shit like that, but like McCaffrey and Debo, like in open field, they're fucking electric, bro. Dangerous, dude. Yeah, Dangerous. what's it like playing against Trent Williams? He's a stud, bro. He's a stud. He's a bro. stud. It was fun though. We had we had some good battles. Did you get one on him? Yeah, I got a couple on him. I didn't get a sack on him, but I had a nice little QB hit on a little inside move. Did you let um, him out? It felt good. No, we we were talking. He's cool as shit. We he, he's talking like just having conversation. But I usually I'm a I line up on the left. So like I'm going against the right tackle most of the time. So once I went over, the, like we knew like Trent's gonna be on an island. So. During the game, we kind of schemed it up where, okay, Max, you're going to play a little bit more on Trent because you'll have more one-on-one -on -one opportunities because they're going to probably chip with the right tackle and stuff. So I got to rush against him a couple times, but I, I fared well. I had some good rushes. He had some good – he's just a big motherfucker, and he's athletic. So, so it was, athletic. It was, a, it was a good matchup, bro. We, we got the best of each other a few times. It was cool. You were telling that story on the plane about him and Deshaun Jackson. They were, like, <laughs> running. Just his athletic ability, yeah. Like, there was one offseason where – we were in uh, OTAs, and they were basically trying to narrow down who had, like, the fastest start. So, like, every group, I mean, very subjective, but 10 yards. It's kind of hard to figure out who wins every one. But a, every position group would go, and then they would put everybody together. But the final two were Deshaun Jackson and Trent Williams because he could just get out. Like, he's That's extremely he athletic, bro. Is, bro. They would talk about him the playing basketball. Too. Yeah. They would talk he's about playing uh, legs and yeah. massive yeah, upper massive, body. Yes. Bro. Makes no sense. He's so talented. They said he sense. would, uh, when they would play basketball at the Y, that he'd play, like, beyond the arc. He'd windmill dunk, like, do all this stuff. He's just, like, I believe a that. super athlete, bro. He's a freak, bro. He really is a freak. What about McGlinchey? That McGlinchey. right tackle for the Niners. Yeah, he's a big dude. He's a big guy. He's he's a little more stiff, but I feel like he's an underrated cat. Like he doesn't get enough respect. Yeah, I no, I thought he was solid. You know, it's that's the weird thing. Like, especially now, like I, I'm like this year, especially like I played on the left side majority of the time, and like early on when me and Chandler were both going, like the chips would just go back and forth. So I would have some more one on ones and shit. But Chan got hurt against Pittsburgh, and like the last few games, it was. Like, if I wasn't moving around, like, I'm getting – they're sliding and they're chipping. So it was hard. It was really fucking difficult to kind of get those true one-on-ones. And, and especially when you're not up in games. Like, you don't – you know, it's, just, it's a lot less – you know, it's a lot more predictable what they're doing. So, no, I got – yeah, Mike McGlinchey, he's, he's a big motherfucker. He was, he was solid. Um, we definitely – yeah, we had, we had a good little – a little back and forth. It was, it was fun, bro. And that's the thing with the Niners. There's certain teams, bro, that, like – they just make it really difficult for your D-line and shit to get off, and that's that's always the biggest challenge. Like, the New Englands, like, you know when you're playing New England, they're going to literally do everything they can to try to stop this guy and this guy. And, like, Tennessee's like that, too. I know yeah. Vrabel's come from the Patriot, the Patriot way, too. So, like, I sit there and hear McDaniels. He's like, okay, Bosa right here. Every single time we're going to slide, we're going to boom, we're going to boom. And I already know going into the week, like, I'm playing Bill Belichick. He's going to try to fuck me up every play. In Tennessee, I know Vrabel's not going to let me just go and try to wreck the game. And that's – I feel like that's – as years have gone on, like, that's been, a, you know, like, in my game, like, having to evolve, you have to truly, like – you have to truly be on it every single play because they're bringing more than one, more than more than less. It's got to be a hell of a compliment, though. Yeah, like, it's, it's, yeah, they're sliding to me and chipping me. It's yeah, it's got to feel good. No, it's awesome, but at the same time, it's very frustrating. Like that's that's like I feel like the biggest part. Like in the past, like last year, like I was getting in my head because I wasn't getting like I was getting a shitload of pressures, but I wasn't getting home. Like there was like a stretch where I like had six games in a row where I didn't have a sack. I felt like I was rushing my best, but I wasn't getting home for some reason. And, like, that's the thing as a rusher that's so difficult. Like, there's no play called for you. Like, you have to go earn every single stat, every play, every sack, every TFL. So, like, that's the challenge. And, like, people from the outside world, if you're not getting sacks as a rusher, like, they think you're, you're like, not balling. You know right. what I mean? Like, Chandler was balling 
and people were on his head because his sack numbers were low. And like, you feel like, I, Chandler was the same guy last year that I was calling like, bro, like, I don't know why I can't get a fucking sack and he's helping me out. So like having Chan here this year, like I was getting a lot of sacks and Chan was, you know, going through it a little bit and like being able to be there for him is like, it's like crazy, bro. It goes full circle. Cause like Chan's a dude I looked up to forever. He's a hundred plus sacks and he's in year 11 and he's like going through it. And it's like, it's tough because it just shows like as a rusher, like this shit is really difficult and you have to appreciate every single stat and everything you get. Cause like, you could rush great for the whole game, but they could just be getting rid of the ball. They could be, you know what I mean? It's yeah. just, that's the tough part about it. But that's also like the beauty in it when there's a reason why sacks are like a big thing because it's not, you know, everything's got to go right. They got to hold the ball. The coverage has got to be on point. Everything's got to be, you know, on point for you to get home. So yeah, Chandler's cool. good at football. Chandler, oh yeah, so I didn't, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, no, Chandler, I forgot. I forgot. Yeah. Oh, you forgot. No, Chandler. <laughs> Chan's a fucking dog, bro. bro. I love, I, as a human being, the dude's one of the coolest dudes I've ever met. When I was playing him in 2021, he had like four sacks that day. I gave up two of them. <laughs> and there was like the end of the game. At that point in the game, I was at such a low point. I was like, I just need to get the fuck out of here and regroup somehow. Yeah. And he like rushed me <clears throat> and he went to pull away and I had his chain and I, I tore it off. Yeah. And he's like, oh, man, now I'm really mad. Now I'm really coming. I'm like, hey, man. I'm like walking back to the huddle. I'm like, hey, man, you have four sacks. You're all right. I'm like, just relax. Just, just, just relax. You got it's enough week, for the month. Just, just, I was, game. that was the lowest football moment. But low key, even before I got hurt, I never played him well. He always played really well against me. Like my second year I played him, he was at the Patriots. And like the first third down, dude, he takes me to the back of the quarterback, strip sack, fumble, return for a touchdown. Like that's how the game started first series. Why do you think he's always done so well? Like, what do you feel like makes him like great? Uh, he's, uh, I don't. He's I think like if I were to play, if I were to play him again, I would, um, I would vary up my sets more. He's so long and he does a good job. Like, it looks like he's always on a step cadence. Like yeah. one, two, bull. One, two, three. Like, turn those shoulders, and he's really long too. So short corners are not good against him. Like, if you get him to like nine and a half, he's got that capability to reach with the far reach, arm yeah. and get that quarter of that that ball out. So it's like he's got enough speed to where, like, I got to respect this, but also he can turn in power also. And then dudes that – and I, I can't remember if you play like this or not, but, like, um, he doesn't necessarily, like, play, like, sound run defense. Like, so you – like, when you're trying to shoot off the ball like we do at Tennessee, he goes inside. Like, he can jump around. Like, if he has that kind of freedom, like, that's an easy way to, like, second-guess yourself. Mm -hmm. And he, he's, uh, he's always been – he's always played me well. I think of all the players – I heard play like he's been a guy that's always kind of had my number. Yeah. Even before getting hurt. He's a stud. Yeah, there's always guy there's always those guys in the league. You, every year you're like, okay, I yeah. know this is about gotta to be. Got to mark this one down. Like, this dude, is about yeah. to be. Yeah, like I got to be on my shit. And that's yeah. Chandler's just bro, he's just unique like how he explained. He's got he's not fast. But he's no, got he's like not. he's but not he... fast and he'll tell you that. He knows he's not, but he's just he's so long and he's so like He's just a different athlete. It's like his brother. Like he, they're so long, but they're not fast, and they probably they can't jump high, but they're like freak athletes. I don't even know how to explain it. Right. They're yeah, just like really the measurables unique. aren't there, but like you, the the game film is way different than what you see. Yeah. Like his combine numbers would be. Exactly. He just he's just a unique unique player, bro. He was born to play football. Dude's a dude's a stud, bro. You met his brother? No, I haven't. No. I heard he's gonna fight again, right? He's fighting. He's got he's got, he's got two brothers. March you know, 4th. Arthur Smith. He played in the league too. Yeah, the whole family. Whole family in the league. Pros. Yeah, it's Arthur, right? Not Arthur. That's the coach of the Falcons. But uh, am I who? The last name is Jones. Arthur Jones. <laughs> Arthur Jones. I don't know why I said Smith. What a <laughs> fucking that, 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 that black label idiot. not has it in. Yeah, that I black know, label not has it Because he was my teammate in Washington. Arthur, 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 Smith. Arthur Smith. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? Just he was their brothers, right? I'm like, that's not even the same name. I, I don't think that's the same. Smith, last. Just, uh, what's Smith Arthur Jones. do? Is he is he an athlete as well? He was a yeah. He was he won a Super Bowl in Baltimore. Is oh shit, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's the oldest though. Yeah, he's the oldest. He didn't have as long as a career, but like that whole family is just. A breeding Freaks, grounds of dude. athleticism. All Freaks. brothers in the NFL, that's, that's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. No, I think he's a stud, man. And he, you're right, he's like an anomaly. Like, you look at him, he's got, like, the the, the size. Yeah. Like you, like, you look like his... He must have a short torso as well, how long yeah. his arms are. Long torso. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, like, he legit, like, does, a, like, incredibly wacky, very unorthodox. Mm -hmm. Extremely yeah. unorthodox rusher. But... Yeah. He just he does well. He you, uh, against me. You mentioned earlier about the Patriot way. What's it like playing for Coach McDaniels? 
What's yeah. it been like playing for Coach McDaniels, transitioning from Coach Passaccia last year? Obviously, you guys are super close. Passaccia is a fucking legend. I've always heard good things but about him. But then you, uh, Coach legend. McDaniels comes in. Uh, what's it been like playing for Coach McDaniels? Um, honestly, my experience has been great. You know, I feel like every time you get a new coach in, there's new expectations. And I feel like it definitely takes time to adjust, you know, as a whole. Like, if you're halfway in, halfway out, you're not going to last. In, in the way he coaches. Like, he has a very specific way that he wants things to be done. He's all about work ethic, all about doing the extra mile. Like, that's how he approaches it. And I, like, like we talked about off camera, like, me and him, we've had a great relationship ever since I got here. The dude, that's how I think when it comes to training and stuff. I'm always doing extra. I'm always, so it's nothing new to me when it comes to that. Um, but like I said, if you're a guy that's, you know, the normal NFL guy, you're not, they're not training all off season. You know what I mean? It's just, they're doing it. They're, it's like, it's hard. It's, it's not like a normal NFL team. Like it's just, it's just different. You're talking about the way he, the way he runs the operation. Yeah. Just the operation. Like we're really working, bro. Like even during the season, like we're in pad, we were in pads like late in the season. At some I've point. heard of some tough days. Yeah. yeah there's I, some I, tough I, days, but like, that's just, the, that's what the, it the, is. The, like, you know what I mean? You can bitch and complain about it or you can show up and fucking improve and get better. And especially in our situation, like, bro, we we're 6-11, and 11, but, like, we lost. We were in every single game, basically, besides New Orleans. Like, we lost every game by, like, less than a touchdown. So we're right there, and that's the probably the hardest part about it is, like, fuck, we're right there. But we have great building blocks on this team. You know, we have Devontae, we have Josh Jacobs, we have a ton of guys. It's just we're not there yet, but I feel like we're definitely, like, on our way like it if things go our way you know what i mean this year like we could have easily been a double di we could have won 10 games easily but that's not the reality shit didn't you know last year we won every single close game and that's the toughest thing about it it's like you can either either overthink it and you know dwell on it and bitch about it but we went six and eleven that's our record it's fucking it's not acceptable but i feel like josh is a as a coach he's he's done a really good job for sure um go ahead no he just seems like a yeah, because this is like this is not meant to be a shot. This is just like an ob an observation. Like the yeah. Raiders, like really underperform for based on the. You guys have an incredible amount of talent on that team. Yeah. And so how do you obviously without overthinking it, what are the what are the little things here and there that you guys lose by losing by seven, you can now win by three. Like yeah. what are those little changes? I think you know I've talked about this already, um, but it's like for me it's the standard like holding guys to. There, there has to be a, a, a standard set. It can't just be you show up to practice, you do the plays. We're not going over. We're not sitting here and, you know, you should watch the film and everybody should be graded. You know, are we really running to the ball? Like little shit like that. I feel, and that's just how I, I have an old school mindset when it comes to that. Like just the little details of running to the ball, loafs, like the shit we talk about, like that's, that's what I think's the difference. You know, at the end of the day, like, if the if the standard is not set in the off season and OTAs and shit like that is never you're never gonna go on the field and everybody's gonna be on the same page. It's just yeah. not reality. And that's where I feel like, you know, last year or the year before, like when you were there, like that's we got to that point at the end of the year. Like everybody was playing for each other. And that's the new thing. Like and it's not like it's McDaniel's fault or anything. Like everything's new. So it does take time. And that's, you know, something as a leader, like, that's what I feel like I need to, you know, take another step, you know, as a leader and being a captain, like, that's something I'm really focused on is building, you know, bringing up the other guys, the guys that really want to be, you know, really want to be great and be a difference maker, not just another guy on the roster to fill out a spot. Like, that's, that's what we need. You know, I, I feel like, like you said, we have the talent in big spots, but like, we do have a lot of things we got to improve on. Like, you know, our D-line wasn't good enough. Our our defense in general wasn't good enough as a whole. Like, it wasn't – we did not play to what I, you know, believe the standard should be. You know, we played – we rushed a lot better the year before. Um, we covered better. You know, there's there's little things that we got to improve on. So, um, you know, that's – and it's a, it's a group effort. You know, it's got to take everybody. And, um, you know, I feel like we're definitely going in that direction. The second half of the season, we played a lot better on defense. But that's just the tough part about it. You can – go back and forth and you know we lost close games but like either way we lost like and that's at the end of the day 6 and 11 6 and 11 is fucking terrible so um yeah you know I, I believe in them I believe that you know we're gonna keep building up the roster in a lot of key spots and you know just keep going in the right direction but the main thing for me is a standard bro like we have to have a standard and there, there can't be guys that are halfway in halfway out because 
you know how it is. You have fucking nine guys on the same page and two are halfway out the door. It's never going to work. So yeah. do that's you feel where like, you got to go. Do you feel like that's what it was? The standard wasn't held the entire year because a lot of the the talks and the headlines and the conversations was, you know, last year we ended up winning like the last five games. Yeah. And then you go in, you think you're going to build off, you have a new regime come in. Of course yeah. it does take time. Um, but then putting the year that you guys did put together, you keep alluding to the standard and everything else and yeah. half in, half out. Do you feel like it was upholding that standard if you when you do look at it? Yeah, I, I feel and like you said, like we talked about, it's not easy. You know, the way the way of, you know, how Coach McDaniels does it is not easy. We're working hard. Like, bro, we're in training camp. It's fucking hundred degrees out we're on the field. Like <laughs> we're not practicing at seven in the morning, like we're practicing at like ten. Like that shit, it's hot, bro. Like people are <laughs> Dying, <laughs> and then we're running gassers at the end. Like it's not a joke. Like, yeah, that desert heat, bro. That it's desert, a, that unreal. real heat. And so, that's my point. Like, as a player, like I pride myself on my routine about doing it every day. No matter if I'm in a bad mood, or if I'm feeling like shit, like showing up and trying to improve, regardless of how I feel. And I feel like we didn't have enough um, of that this year. Just we didn't sustain it for a whole season. Like you can do it in camp. You can do it in OTAs for the first couple months, but it's like. We need a bunch of guys who are down or are willing to sacrifice the whole year and be on be on point. And um, you know that's you know that's just a part of it. Where you know if, I feel like we're gonna bring in more guys that are like-minded. And you know I just I'm trusting it. You know I'm, it's not my control. I'm just you know I just want to be a leader. You know that's that's my main goal: lead the guys, bring up the younger guys, and, and show them the way. So when you're uh, when you're saying like I, I have a standard for myself that I set every day, whether I feel like shit or I feel good, like when you feel like shit and you don't want to do it. Because I feel like a lot of people are going to hear that and be like, I go, everyone goes through the same thing. Yeah. Everyone's got motivation week one. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's week 10. You're like, oh man, I really don't want to get up and go <laughs> do it again. Like yeah. what are the things that you tell yourself when you're working through that process? Like you wake up in the morning, you're sore. It's Wednesday. You know, you're going into pads. Yeah. You know, it's week 12. Like how do you make sure not only you set that standard for yourself, but as a leader, like you're saying, set that for everybody else. Yeah. Um, you know, the main thing for me is just, it's that foundation. Like, if you don't have a solid foundation going into the season, like, if there's little cracks in it, that shit, the whole house is going to come down by, you know, halfway through the year. And that's, like, my main thing. I, I'm a very, like, I have an addictive personality. You know what I mean? I have an, I'm an addict at the end of the day. So, like, I use it to my, as a superpower nowadays. Like, there's certain shit. Like, I, every single day I'm doing the same thing, like, Norma Tech, stretch every every night before I go to bed, like cold tub, hot tub every single day. I'm, you know, there's certain things I have to do, my meal prep, everything. So like, even when I'm feeling like shit, I have to like every morning, I know I have to do it. Like it's an agreement I have with myself once the season ends. Like, and that's something I'm doing right now, trying to figure out, okay, what, what can I do better? How, well, how am I gonna be better next year? What am I, like there's certain things I write down, like I'm not breaking this, like there's no, there's no conversation with myself in my head, no matter how fucking bad I feel. So I feel like it's just, you know, the main thing is just being mentally, you know, obviously you gotta be mentally strong, but you have to just make agreements with yourself. Like, I'm not fucking breaking this. And we'll see what happens. If it goes great, if I play great, whatever, like that's amazing, that comes with it. But like, if I don't play up to the level I expect, like, I know I did everything trying to do that. So I'm not going to feel like a piece of shit. Like I, I, right, statistically, the numbers might not be there, but knowing the yeah, way Yeah, if I put performed. everything I have in it, right. bro, I can't feel bad about it. So, But obviously, <laughs> that's not the, the case. Process. Yeah, yeah like, and, and just trusting it. So like, that's what I, I always try to tell the young guys. It's like, like my thing this past off season, like what can I do better as far as going into training? Like the weird little difference I made, like I was going in at 8 a.m. and going to train. My agreement with myself this past off season was I'm going to be in the building by six, no later, every morning, 6 a.m., Monday through Friday. And that's fucked. That's not easy in the no, off season. No, especially Fridays when you get to go in later. Fuck yeah. Yeah. And, and, and this is, I'm talking February, March, when there's no, I don't have to be there technically. Mm. Like this is all off season. And I did that. So once the season got there, like that was like a, boom, I checked that off, I did that. Like that's, for me, that's where I get my confidence from. It's a little shit that like nobody, nobody's telling me I gotta do this. I, it's little shit that like, it's challenging as fuck in the off season when I have, I could sit here and sleep and get relaxed until 8 a.m. You know what I mean? But I'm getting up at 5:15 and I'm going and going and working out when there's nobody in that bitch. That's kind of what I, you know, that's just one thing. But 
that's how I pride myself is just like setting the standard. Boom, this is what I'm doing regardless of the situation. No matter how I feel, I'm getting the fuck out of bed and I'm doing this. And that's that's where where all my confidence comes from. And that's how I try to push the guys around me because I'm not like a big hoorah guy. I'm not going to stand there. This is what we fucking got to do. Blah, blah, blah. Like I'll speak when I have to. But like as a leader, like I feel like at the end of the day, the true leaders, like they show they show that shit every single day. And that comes to practice, the weight room. Like that's how I try to carry myself and pride myself on because if you go and ask any guy in the locker room or ask Dave, you can ask Dave when you get there, you can ask fucking Coach McDaniels, like they can say whatever, you know, I, I might be a dick sometimes, I might, whatever, but. Redhead. Yeah, red, red beard, everything, <laughs> you know what I mean? Super white. But at the end of the day, they can never say I don't work harder than anybody in that building. I that's, think it's shows. That's what I pride myself on. That's yeah, you see it on that film. matters. Yeah, having non-negotiables is like a yeah. massive, a massive yeah. thing that people need to have. It's huge, bro. Even it's it's my sports. whole life, bro. It, cha- it, it, it changes it. Two years ago, when I got that surgery, bro, I started doing that. It changed my whole fucking life, bro. It, it definitely, it definitely shows. And that's like me being there. You are literally there doing your shit every day. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we inter- interrupt this episode with Max Crosby to bring you something so very dear and special to us, and that is yeah. Whistle. <sighs> whistle Pig Whiskey, dude. I don't want to put outrageous claims out there, but I will tell you that this Bustin' with the Boys Whistle Pig Whiskey is the only whiskey that's ever been tasted that literally changes with the season. Right now, we're sitting in January. We're about to move into February. The weather's cold. It's a little bit brittle. You go home. It's been a long day. What do you do? You take that bottle. You put it down your throat. And what do you get? That warming sensation that makes you internally fill up with not only joy, but that hot, hot heat that's going to make you feel better every single day. Love. It's summertime. We're six months down the road. It's July. My, your boy's birthday is right around the corner. Now we're looking around. We're hot. We're sweating a little bit. Grab this bus with the boys, six years aged, whistle pig whiskey, pop that bottle, take that swig down that beautiful throat of yours, and you're going to feel not only an amazing feeling of joy yet again, but you're also getting that cooling sensation saying, hey, I could go a little bit longer in X, Y, Z, whatever I'm doing to cause this perspiration coming down my forehead. Mm. It's an outstanding time. Do us a favor. Click the link in the YouTube description to buy it now this stuff is so incredible and with that being said please enjoy the rest of this episode with max crosby on busting with the boys when you talk about the standard not that you have to get out of character or get out of personality with it but do you yeah. feel like approaching this next year maybe you do speak up a little bit more to kind of uphold that standard because you are a guy who's earned your stripes in the league now like everybody knows the stuff and you're talking about your routine every day now right yeah so people know about that and understand uh, you know how you come correct every day do you feel like you need to uh speak up a little more to fill more of that leadership role to uphold that standard that you were alluding to earlier um, yeah, you know, the, like I look, I evaluate everything from my leadership to my play to my, just my attitude, my presence, like everything. I, I really sit down and break down. All right, what can I do better here? And I feel like that's with anything, you know, I could, there's always room for improvement as a leader, but I feel like, you know, my, my third year, when you were there, we beat the charges last game. Like that was my first year being a captain and I'd never been a captain my whole life. Like, so that was my first time really being voted a captain. So it was like, I was learning a lot, you know what I mean? And that being in that leadership role, but it was, it was different. It was a lot easier when I had a bunch of guys who thought like me, like Quentin Jefferson, Solomon Thomas, Yannick, like they're all, like all of them are fucking crazy. Yannick, cra- legit. Yeah, I like really they're, yeah. really like that. Yes, yeah, he like is. They're he si- is. Like they're all kind of crazy in their own way, but like that's how I am. So like I, I really didn't have to push, you know what I mean? We're all like, they've seen how I work. They're, there wasn't negotiables. They're with me after the work, you know what I mean? After practice, running with me. KJ Wright. I had a full squat. Yeah, like I wasn't having to pull motherfuckers. That's what I feel like this year. It was diff, you know, it's a lot different because I had a whole new team basically. More youth. Yeah, a lot of younger guys, a lot of guys coming from other teams' practice squads, and boom, they're playing on Sunday with me. So that's that was the challenge this year. It's like this dude doesn't fucking even. I, I don't know this guy at all. I just met him two days ago, and now I got to try to lead him. You know what I mean? Like that was the biggest challenge this year. Is there was a lot of change, a lot of different guys in and out, ton of injuries. So like, it was a big challenge, and I feel like overall it's like the hardest year mentally for me, uh, because I feel like I was playing my best ball. And I really had a lot of shit that was going on. We were struggling. We're losing a lot of close games. Like, there was a lot of moments where I could have just fucking lost, you know, lost my marbles and act out, you know, just fucking lash out. But, like, I really had to sit there and just internalize a lot of shit and just 
be grateful for just being in this situation because I could look at it and bitch about it. Oh, I don't have, you know, I don't have a bunch of pro bowlers playing with me. I don't have this. Uh, he has this and point to other teams. Well, this guy's got that. You know what I mean? Like I could do that, but it's just, it does nothing. And it's, that's what a fucking coward would do. And for me, it's like, bro, I, I trust what I'm doing. I know I'm working like, like no other. And I trust in the end, it's all going to work out the way it's supposed to. If I just continue doing the right shit and like, I look at guys like Aaron Donald, like, bro, he was in with the Rams. They sucked for years, and he was the best player in the league, but nobody was really talking about him like how they talk about him now. But over the time, he stuck to the process. He continued to dominate, and then by year, what is it, year 10 last year, he's in the Super Bowl, biggest moment. Everyone fucking sees Aaron Donald. There's no question he's the best, and he goes on the biggest play and fucking wins the Super Bowl. Like, that's the shit I think about. Like, when I get those moments. Yeah, like right. it's it's touchdown, bro, and he wins and gets home ball game. Like, that's the type of shit I think about. Like, I can lose my shit right now and be like, "Well, the fucking Michael Parsons rushing with De- De- Demarcus Lawrence and fucking, you know, he's got other, you know, whatever." But that's not, you know, that's not what it is. My story is different than everybody, so I just trust that, bro, and I continue to just grind, bro. I work nonstop, and I trust it's all gonna work out the way it's supposed to. When you first get to the NFL, like, there's a lot of distractions and guys. Like, you you have no money, then all of a sudden you have a bunch of money. Regardless mm-hmm. of where you're drafted, like, it's more money than you've ever had. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and that is difficult anywhere you go. But it's I can't imagine what it's like being a rookie or a younger guy and coming to Las Vegas to play for the Raiders. <laughs> like, how is that? How are you going to work through that process? Because that stadium, you can see it. You can see the strip. Yeah. And it is a cool place to be. Yes. It is fun. And you, if you're a young cat with no, with all this money, mm-hmm. like how do you keep guys straight during the season when you're not winning all the games you should be winning? That's a, that's a tough question. You know, everybody's different. And that's, that's a, the biggest difference when you get to the NFL. It's not like college. You know, everybody in college, it's like... Like more even, structure. Yeah, it's so a lot structure more structure. Called. Everybody's on an even playing ground. Nobody's richer than this guy. It's like... This is what it is. You know what I mean? Now you get to the NFL, and if this is any city. You can play for the New York Giants here in New York City. It's There's always going to be that. Like, I, bro, I was in Ypsilanti, Michigan, and I still found ways to get fucking lit and have fun and do all that shit. So, like, being in Vegas, obviously, it's amplified. But I feel like just having a solid foundation, bro, having good people around you, being around the right people. Because there can be, there's, bro, there's a million people that are going to pull at you and Hey, I got this for you, bro. Hey, come into this club. I got you hooked up. And then all of a sudden, two months later, like, uh, you owe me uh, $20,000 from that one right, night. Right. Like, what? You know what I mean? Hey, a little shit like that. those are so, skeevy, bro. Fuck yeah. So, like, bro, I just, for me, it's just, I, I don't even, bro, I don't even go to the club. I'm, I'm chilling all the yeah. time. The, I go to cigar lounge. That's the only thing I do. So, but you have um, your, I you stay have your out of it. Straight. Yeah, you, I have a you, different, but yeah, for young guys, bro, it's hard. Like, like if, like, if like, I was here as a rookie, I, bro, I don't even know what the fuck. I was fucking yeah, wild. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, like, you've been, you've been really vocal about your whole process. Yeah. When you first came in the league, imagine if you were in Vegas. I, bro, it'd be crazy. And that's, that's the thing. Like I say, like these rookies, I can't sit here and be like, Stay in your house and do it. Like, because at the end of the day, bro, guys are going to go out. Especially if you're single. Guys are going to, especially if you're single, you're going to be out doing whatever you're going to do. It's just about being being smart, bro. Be cautious. Don't go out by yourself. Don't go out with people you don't know. Like, you really got to roll with the people you trust and stay out the bullshit because there's a bunch of bullshit going on. Especially at that, bro, you go out to a nightclub, you don't know what the fuck's going to happen. You know what I mean? It, somebody, they see you, they know you're an NFL player, you're immediately a target. No matter what it is, like they want whatever you got. So, and people are willing to lose whatever they have to fucking get what you have. People will fucking rob you in broad daylight. They don't care. And that's just the thing, you know, for the young guys, just knowing who you're around and try, and don't just be out and about. Like right. it's normal. You know what I mean? You're not. I think that's the thing. I re, like. I still have to slap myself because I. I'll drive and pull up to a gas station by myself and the fucking big chain on my I won't even think about it. You know what I mean? And that's that's now like as I gotten older, like I, I truly have to like slap myself in the face. Like I'm not I can't just roll around and do whatever like normal sometimes because people are crazy, bro. You see it all the time. Guys, NFL players go to LA and get fucking their whole shit robbed and taken and they're just going out there to go hang out with family. It's like it's it's dangerous, bro. Especially nowadays, bro. You see more and more of it all the time. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about when the, the switch with Derek Carr was made, how, how it impacted you and how you felt like it probably impacted the team in that moment, if at all, because obviously there was a lot of noise outside of the building. 
Yeah. Um, a lot of noise. A lot of noise. It's definitely outside the building. Um, it was tough, bro. I remember that morning. Because um, DC's been the, the the franchise guy since you've you've came to the Raiders. Yeah, yeah. He was a all, all four years. He was my quarterback. He's nine years as a starter, which is crazy. It doesn't happen. So, yeah, I'm sitting there. You're hearing rumors like, okay, is Derek going to get benched this week? You know, what is going on, blah, blah, blah. And you're just kind of hearing rumors, rumors. But you know how it is. You don't believe all this shit. You're just like, okay, we'll see. And then all of a sudden, like, we, we went in that morning – and me and DC are always the first two guys in there. And we sit there and eat breakfast. So, like, squad is at 8. Like, we're in there at 6 o'clock. And we sit there and we eat breakfast together. We talk. We go in the hot tub. I go take a dump. And then he goes and does whatever he does. You know what I mean? So I go in there. And DC wasn't there at the breakfast table. And so I asked Angie, who's there. She runs the kitchen. She's the best. Shout out to Angie. This is the camera. I love you, Angie. She's the best. She always sits with us and watches us and just chops it up with us. And I was like, Angie, where's DC? Have you seen him? She's like, no, he hasn't been in yet. And that's when my head, I'm like, fuck. It, you know what I mean? Something, something went down. So, yeah, like an hour later, I'm in my locker. I just got out the hot tub. And um, DC walks in and... He's looking at me, and I just knew. Like, I already, I just knew immediately. And he just, whatever, he gave me a man hug. He's like, bro, I don't want to make it look like I'm, you know, quitting on y'all or anything, but, like, me and Josh talk. Like, I'm, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to go home and for these next two weeks and, you know, figure out my situation. But it was like, you know, obviously they had their business behind the scenes, and they've, had, you know, had an agreement. So, like, it wasn't like he just like, fuck it, I'm not showing up. It was just like, you know, business. So... Yeah, it was tough. Like, D.C.'s my boy, bro. Like, me and D.C. have been always, you know, as friends. Like, bro, he's a great dude. I love D.C. And he's going to, you know, somebody's going to have him as their starter next year. And hopefully I get to play against him. It'd be dope. But I wish him the best, bro. It's just, it's hard. Like, in this league, there's really, you know, you can play for a team for 10 years, give everything you got. Like, but unless you're, like, Michael Jordan or you're Tom Brady, like, even Tom Brady, it's the same thing. Like, bro, he was in year 21, six Super Bowl, and there, he ended with a bad relationship, and they got rid of him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there was kind of friction. Like, it's crazy, bro, at the end of the day. It's like so the business of it's it. It's a business, and that's the thing you got to realize. It's not personal. It's not like people don't like D.C. Everyone, you know, everyone's cool at D.C. We love them. But it, it is what it is. You know, Josh and Dave, they got their vision of what they want, and – you know, that's just part of this business, man. I, I and I trust them. You know, I'm I'm on this team, and and they're my coaches. That I, at the end of the day, I gotta believe in what they got. You know what I mean? And what they're bringing and what they're doing. But at the same time, it's hard when it's your boy and it's, there's emotion to it. So it's like, damn, what the fuck? And then you like you want to get mad, but it's like, at the same time, you have to understand both sides of it. And that's kind of what I've learned. You know, being in the league more, it's like you can't you can't take shit personally because it's not personal, bro. It's a billion dollar business, and it is what it is. Dude, I've been around Derek just like a handful of times. He's like the nicest. He's like, seems like the nicest guy. Yeah, he's of all great time. Dude. Focused, kind, like charismatic, good mm -hmm. dude. So he's gone. This is the off season. Hypothetically, who <laughs> do you want to be the quarterback of the Las Vegas Raiders? <laughs> who do I want? Like if it was just your world, they call you, say who you want. You got who you want. You get to play GM. You for get a day. to play GM. Now this will be taken out of context. People are like, oh, Max wants this guy, wants that guy. I'm just saying perfect world, boss. Yeah, the, fun hypothetical. Fun hypothetical. Fun hypothetical. Like we're just hitting, we're, we're having a little giggle time, dude. Yeah. This is a nice little time. Just boys hanging out. Yeah. Tom Brady three, might uh, be on the market. Three boys and two dogs. Three dogs. I didn't even see a little well, one over there. Yeah, she's snuck in. Yeah, yeah she's snuck in behind what, the what tank, dude. Um, Tom Brady? I would love to have Tom Brady. Oh. Hey. How, I, I don't know how that can be controversy. They it's can fucking be. Tom Brady. Bro. Yeah, it's Tom yeah, Brady. Sure. As a leader, as a fucking player. As the GOAT. As the GOAT, fuck yeah. I would love to play with Tom Brady. Bro. If he can to, if come to Vegas, bro. Have you met I'll him? I'll fucking, I'll, fly, I'll go to wherever he's at to introduce myself. The level of respect I got for him, bro, is out this world. So, yeah, I would love to have Tom Brady. But we'll see. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. But I've, I've only met him when I played him two years ago. Um, it was the COVID year. And he was on the field. We, play, we played in Vegas, empty-ass stadium. We come in for pregame. And I always, like... Early on in my career, I'd always, like, kind of walk around the field, and it was, like, a part of my routine. 
um, in like my full like pregame outfit, like just my my fit, and. I'm walking by myself, going around, and then fucking Brady walks out of the locker room by himself. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I felt it. Yeah. I felt the aura. And uh, I seen him. I, we didn't say anything to each other at the time, whatever. I was just walking, doing my thing. He's walking. He's just kind of looking around, looking at the stadium, which is, in hindsight, it's kind of crazy. You know, it's just plotting out his yeah, next yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. But, anyway, so I, I talked to him after the game. He's, you know, obviously he's a great dude. He was super cool, but. Yeah, bro. I, I would love. Obviously, I would love to have Tom Brady. The dude's a, he's a goat. So. He is the goat, dude. Yeah. Very few people you ever meet in your life have that kind of aura. <laughs> yeah, it's different. But bro. everyone I, I've met who has met Tom is like, dude, there's like a glow behind him. It's right. different, bro. Yeah, he's like too handsome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's too it, he's handsome. Fake I, feel like he's had, I feel like he's had something done. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. but like a classy amount. Like there's, yeah. he doesn't look like he's, like you know, my man gets Botox. Like it's, it's. Yeah. You know, them teeth ain't real. No. But I think he's done a classy amount of work. <laughs> a classy <laughs> amount. High class amount. Yeah. He doesn't get yeah. like filler yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff <laughs> and like all, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I that would like to know what's happening to his cheeks. Like what's going down with the cheeks? Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? You see Stabby Baby, his uh, little thing? No. <laughs> with them, yeah, he, I'm not going to even do it. He says some shit I can't say. But yeah, dude, he does. Because you look at pictures of him, and I hope on this YouTube right now we're flashing a picture of Tom from his Subscribe. rookie year. Because my God. He had that rounded out face, yeah. no cheekbones. Right. No cheekbones. Now it's different. Yeah, bro, he different now. <laughs> he's just, he, bro, he's like 47. He's like 47. Dude, just, he's not 47. He's getting younger. Sure. On the, uh, do you on think the, he still got it? Sorry, I hate to cut you off. I, I know you're probably, you're pivoting, but do you think Tom still has it? Absolutely. I love that. I agree with you 100%. Absolutely. I hate when people... You think so? I mean, he's 40, he's like mid-40s. doesn't matter. They said that when he was 40. You know, he's 46 now. Look how they got into the playoffs, bro. He was snapping and having comeback games. He threw for 400 yards just two weeks ago. They had a lot of injuries, bro. Get receipts. He they had, bro. Question. I watch football, and Tom could still play. He's bro. their their I'm whole line was play. getting murdered this year, and that's just out of respect. They were, the, I think, they were ranked last in the league. Like he was getting hit all the time. They had a lot of injuries. Their backs were hurt. Like they had a lot of shit going on. But it's funny you look back. You see what he did his last year in New England when y'all beat him. He, everyone said the same thing. Oh, he's done. He's, he's done. washed. He's done. And this is, I, I look at it like, and I'm, you know, I like to write that little story. It's like, oh, well, it's going to be his last hoorah, so, you know, two or three year deal, in New, you know, in, in Las Vegas. Yeah. Finish the career, I'll go get a back. ring, be with he the boys. He knows the GM. He knows the boys. He knows what? The no, it's just, come on. Let's be real. Yeah. I so tell we'll you see. What. And you got studs on offense, too. What? Do you have a good, good old line? Our old line was played a lot better than people expected this year. That's oh, awesome. I mean, they did really Josh well, Josh led bro. the league in rushing yards. Josh led in rushing. Snapped. Chip on his shoulder. Devontae bro. went for over 1,500. We yes. have Colt Miller, one of the best left tackles in the league. We got a lot of, bro, we got, we got a lot of, a lot of solid guys, for sure. Do you think, uh, what do you think Josh Jacobs' future is with the Raiders right now? Because he's about to be a free agent? He's a free agent, yeah. So, I know for a fact that the coaches love him. Um, Obviously, when they first came, they we had three first-round picks from my class. It was Clee, Josh, and John Abram. And before the year, they declined all their fifth-year options. So everyone's like, oh, fuck. They're, Cleaning you house. know how they are in New England. They don't value the running back. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. From my perspective, I know Josh. Like, me and Josh have been boys since I got there. And Josh is one of those people that, like, he need like, I feel like he needs that little extra motivation. Like, oh, you don't, okay. I, I remember exactly what you said. He's going to make you look dumb. And that's what I feel like this year was. Like, everyone was saying, oh, it's New England. They don't, you know, they don't value running backs the same. They'll just bring him in. Josh literally was the best running back in the league in, this year, and you can't even argue it. Every category, yards per carry, broken tackles, for amount of first downs run, like, he did everything. And so... I'm extremely proud of him, obviously, uh, being being one of my boys. But I think he's going to stay here, bro. I, and no matter – I don't know how this, what that's going to look like if they tag or try to sign an extension, but I think he's 1,000% he's 1, earned an extension. Like, the dude has been a pro bowler, I think, this is third time now in four years. So, like, he's – the dude is a dog. He's an absolute dog. You know, Josh, he's, the, the shit he plays through, he's always banged up. And, and he's always about, like, you know, I remember when we got our ass over from the Chiefs. Yeah. Um, and he was so pissed about him fumbling, like, early in the game. Oh, and yeah. just like, man, 
on the outside looking in, what do you feel like it is? I'm like, bro, I just fucking got it. Like, we just got our ass whooped type of deal. But he's very much like in it. He loves football. Yeah, he loves ball. And that's what he I talk ball. about. The guys like that, the Devontes, we need guys that have that mindset. No matter what the talent level, the Deron Harmons, the dudes who really love football, that's what you need in the building. And Josh is 100% that guy. Uh, talk, going back just for a second on the on the DC situation, was there ever a time where you're like, "Fuck, man," because there there is a lot, uh, uh, you know, that uh, like I think it was a statistic that was out there that the Raiders have been ranked like bottom tier defense since he's been a quarterback. Do you like ever sit there and you're like, "Fuck, man," like you put a little bit on yourself? Obviously, you ultimately don't or you can't, but you're just like, "Fuck it," we could have just. Honestly, bro, I don't know how to answer that. You know what I mean? Early in his career, like, their defense is, like, bottom defense every year. Like, we haven't been the worst of the worst, but we haven't been great. Um, but also, you just look at it, we've had three different D coordinators in the last three years. So, like, I think stability is a big thing as well. Um, and that's something, you know, having Pat Graham back next year for the second year, I feel like we're only going to get better. And, you know, having Josh back, like, everybody... If it immediately doesn't work, they're like, fuck it, fire everyone. But that's, a, that's the outside world. And that's just, you know, that's natural um, because you see other coaches, like Dayball comes in, boom, Giants, playoffs, already won a playoff game. Be like, oh, fuck, why aren't we doing that? He gets, Josh automatically gets compared to Yeah, compared com to immediately compared, but every situation is different. And so, you know, it is what it is. You know, as, as from the fans' perspective, it's like, what the fuck? Fuck him, we're firing him. But that's how they think about every coach if you don't succeed right away. But... You know, I feel like Josh is doing the right thing. It's just going to take time for sure. And I feel like we're, you know, we're going the right direction. Are you the, were you the biggest Pro Bowl snub in the league? I made the Pro Bowl. Or all pro. But the all, My fault. All but pro. the all pro. Woof. Woof. My fault. My fault. <laughs> that I made was the tough, Pro Bowl. My fault. Um, my fault. My fault. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Were you the biggest all pro snub in the league? That's not me to decide, but... You're a competitive motherfucker, dude. No, like, no, it's that shit fucking I know, pissed me I, yeah, off. I, I saw, like, that you, shit pissed me you off. You vocalize it a little bit or enough to be like, hey, this is a receipt I'm keeping. Yeah, for sure. But it's, it, it's like anything else, bro. When I look at it, you know, you have this own story in your head. Boom, this is how it's going to go. I want this. I want this. I'm going to get this. Like this year, bro, if I look at like I made all pro last year. I was second team all pro. I had eight sacks. But I had 100 plus pressures, boom, whatever. And that was like... You know, from the outside world, everyone's like, oh, it was a fucking flash in the pan. He's just doing it because it was a contract. He needed to get a contract. Like, I heard that shit all offseason. Like, okay, it was like this big storybook. Max told everybody about his sobriety story. Like, it was just like people that's – everyone had like, oh, it's just too good to be true. It, that was his year. But, like, people – I feel like people in the outside world didn't truly respect me, like, fully as, like, a Miles Garrett or T.J. Watt because, you know, they're all first-round picks. They're all top ten guys. They're all consistently ballers. Like – so for me, going into this year, like, my attitude was, like, fuck that. Like, I'm, I'm that guy. Like, I, I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to be – because I'm always compared – ever since Khalil Mack left, like, everyone talks about how the Raiders have been missing a pass rusher, missing Khalil Mack. We haven't recovered from Khalil Mack leaving. And that's, like, something I take super serious, bro. Like, and I take offense – like, I take offense to that shit, like, but in a good way. I let it use it as motivation. And so, like, in my storybook, like, I have a lot of things that I want to do and – going into this year like all right how am I going to do better how am I going to do better than second team all pro I, okay I want to be first team all pro I want to do there's a lot of things but I'm not like a big like number I don't, I don't put a number on anything like I'm gonna get this amount of sacks this amount of blah 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 for me it's like I'm gonna fucking improve well whatever that looks like I'm gonna improve as a player and take it to another take a whole another step and I've just from a film perspective from a stat perspective I did that in literally every facet. I had more, I, bro, I, had, I led the team in tackles as a DN. I have fucking 89 tackles. Like, I had 22 TFLs. I led the league. I had 12 and a half sacks. I was, like, tied six. I have t pressures. I was top three in the league. Like, every category, like, I took big strides. And for me, in my head, like, my perfect story is, boom, I'm going to start in the Pro Bowl again. I got that. The last thing was all pro, and I'm waiting. I'm like... Boom, I can't wait. But and then all of a sudden I look at the list, I'm like, what? And like I was shook, bro. Like I was hurt. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Deep down, like that that shit hurt my pride. I'm like, what the fuck? I, I got better, bro. I know I got better. And and I didn't make it. And that's like, that's the thing. And, and 
in my perspective, in my world, like I wanted, that was the final thing that I fucking wanted on this season. You know, we didn't make the playoffs. I knew we weren't making the playoffs, but like just from my personal goals. And then I didn't get that. And I'm like, all right, motherfuckers. Like I, the season went great, but I'm not doing enough. That's just the way I took it. And like I know he, like I got y'all, better. Like y'all must have forgot. Yeah, but it, at yeah, the yeah, same time, like, forgot. Yeah, like, bro, yeah, yeah. like, yeah, like, I know I got better. My goal was to get better. I did, bro, everything in my power, all fucking offseason. I did everything right, and then that was the last thing that I wanted. And boom, I didn't get it. And so for me, I could sit there and bitch and go on Twitter, fuck that is bullshit. You know, you see guys all the time bitching yeah. about the shit. You see just a couple games ago when fucking dude had a meltdown and, blaming the refs and I see dudes blaming well oh, fucking old lineman hold all the time refs don't call it like I'll never be that guy bro I think that's you know shit like that is so weak to me like you're gonna get held like I'm I know I get held all the time bro you watch the Rams last drive against us bro I was getting literally tackled but I'm not gonna go and double down and go look like a little fucking crybaby you know what I mean that's not me so at the end of the day like the last thing I wanted was to get that all pro but I know at the end of the day like I'm going to look back next year when I do everything I set out to do and be like, yeah, this shit was for a reason. I needed that little that little thing that's going to fucking push me to do that extra little rap, the extra little shit. And it is what it is. Like, that shit pisses me. Like, it really hurt me. <laughs> you see over here. Hey, Dave, hey, don't, hey, don't you like that? You know, that's kind of not for me to say. It's like, hey, come on now. He's like, man, I fucking. Yeah. Bro, that shit, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to let y'all know, I'm not, bro. I'm not like juicy. that, but fuck that shit, dude. <laughs> no, like, I, bro. I'm, I, I, get, I get it. It is what it is. Yeah. And I can't do anything. Like, in my young self, like, I thought the same thing. Like, my rookie, when I was going... <laughs> My rookie year, like, I thought I was going to win rookie of the year. I thought I should have won it. I didn't. And But that helped me the next year. Like, it's always something that every player needs, that little extra motivation. And, like, I can't control that. But at the end of the day, bro, I know, like, it's all going to pay off. Like, it's all going to – I don't need to force it nah, and talk on Twitter and do all this extra shit and complain. And th what is that going to do for me, bro? It's going to make me look like an ass if I go next year and don't play as well. You know what I mean? Like – I'm going to do everything I can to be better than I was this year, and that's that's what's going to push me. So, yeah, it is what it is. What is So if you're looking at it now, like, I was snubbed. That pissed you off. I think that I got to work harder and do what, what are things, little minor critiques you make to your off-season training regimen that might get you that all pro? Um, I, honestly, I think that that's something I'm looking at right now before I start training again. Yeah. Before I start training again, I do it every year, um, especially these last two years. Just you train here? Yeah, I train in Vegas. Yeah, you, um, do you I'm train in the facility? Facility, or you, okay. yep. Um, so, yeah, that's something I'm evaluating right now. Sorry, he's like, he hears my mouth in the microphone. <laughs> Dude, we'll, bro, anytime yeah. someone goes and starts talking, he opens his mouth like that. Bro, <laughs> shit's going on up, 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 up top. Just, and he's juicing me up, I can't. Put your lips together. I, I, like, I'm in, you know what I mean? I'm just like, that's just me taking it in, I guess. I can't fucking help you it. Say, you, you said... <laughs> I, he got me riled up and I'm fucking fired up. Yo, was so, kidding, bro, you, that bro. was like a hype little deal right there. I was hype. Someone needs to cut that and put yeah. that in a bunch of music behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. Spartan music, yeah. Dude, it's like Drake, dude. Yeah. I had somebody tell me I fell off. Ooh, I needed that. Yeah, yeah. I needed it. But that, yeah. that's, yeah, for me, like it, my routine, that's something I'm gonna break down. Like I've already talked to the strength staff, the, the nutritionist, we've already sat down and boom, we're gonna, this is what we're gonna do. A, a little adjustments where I can, you know, improve on, but it's, it's not the work ethic part of it. I, bro, I put in, I know I work fucking extremely hard. It's just about how can I make it a little bit better? What can I do a little bit smarter? A little shit like that. And so that like this second year, like going into my third year, there was a lot of big adjustments I had to make. And I, I felt like I took another big step. Like I added boxing into my off days instead of just doing strictly tubs and chilling. Like I added an hour of boxing in, in, in that. So there's something, you know, there's always going to be little shit. Like I'm, I'm starting, I'm going to add yoga this off season. Like just adding little shit. But I, you know, I don't know everything yet, but just try to take that, take, take that next big step. Because I know in this league, bro, like if the biggest thing is the guys that continue to do it, and you know this fucking well being a pro boy doing it over and over like you either get worse or you get better and like there's no in between you don't just stay the same you don't like for me it's 
I can't, like, I can't even, I don't even know what life would look like just in my brain if I didn't do all the things I was doing now. Like, if I could just chill this off season, like, some, a lot of guys do it. They're fucking chilling. And, and just take a step back. Like, I, I can't even sit. Like, I, it's, I have to take this time off to just let my body rest. But I'm still meal prepping, stretching, Norma taking every day. Like, I have to do it for my own sanity. So, like, that's, that's what it is for me, bro, just taking that next step. I'm fucking, like, obsessed with the process because I know where I want to go, and I, I can't do it any other way. So I'm just fine-tuning everything, and we'll, you know, we'll see what, what we got on the agenda this offseason. And that addiction becoming a superpower. Hell yeah. It's real, like shit. It's Buddy, real you, shit. Buddy, um, this is a outstanding first impression for me with you. I'm very impressed. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are finally mindset. I'm glad you guys yeah. are finally meeting too. It yeah. is crazy because no, it's I like it, I'm like, damn, I thought I guess you guys haven't met yeah, each other. Yeah, it's just crazy. Cause yeah. when I literally when I saw you, you were waiting for us outside, which was a, a very kind of you, by the way, to wait for us yeah, of course. when we were pulling up. Next to the road. I legit saw I was like, oh, there's the boy. Like I feel I literally feel like we've met before. hundred percent. And hung out. So 100%. this this has been and it's cool to see your mindset. Because you've got it, bud. I appreciate you've it. You've got bro. it. No, that everything means... but being white, like everything's going for you. <laughs> you know? That means a lot, bro. I appreciate well, Taylor, it. Taylor for knows real. when I when I got to Oakland and my boy checked in on me after my first day of school with the Raiders. Yeah. And I was like, hey, somebody on the squad is like a fan of busting with the boys. Yeah. I was like, it's Max Crosby. You weren't who yeah. you are now, but it was like yeah. I don't know. Now looking back, that's fucking cool. Yeah, it was it's crazy. Cool. It's crazy. It I'll was cool because when you were like, reached up, you're like, hey, you're like, yeah. he's like telling somebody, he goes, no, this man's famous. And I'm just kind of sitting 100%. there, like, nervous, like, you know, first day in the first meeting. First day. Room. Yeah. Oh, you and, think you're uh, somebody, he's huh? Like, he's like, uh, no, nah, I'll rock with Bustle with the Boys. I'm like, yo, let's fucking go. Yeah, yeah, that's a hilarious amped. contrast to um, you going up to Will being like, hey, I fuck with you guys. And then yeah. Richie Incognito being like, oh, I do Bustle with the Boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just bullying. Yeah, bullying. Just bullying. Yeah, bullying. Fucking bullying me. Bullying him. How was it like playing with Richie? Shit, I love Richie. He's Richie's awesome. one of my favorite teammates I've ever had. The dude is, he, like, it's, you talk about work ethic, that motherfucker works, bro. And, like, takes care, the way he take, took care of his body, how massive he is and playing 15 Wide years. Wide body. Bro, a fucking semi truck. Bro. And he looks like he's 16 years old in the face. He's yeah. no stress. Like, he just, the dude is different. He's been through a lot of shit. And, like, just being around him and getting to, you know, become closer with him, like, he was truly one of the best teammates I had. Like, take me under the wing, like, type of dude. Like, he was exactly that guy. Like, for some reason, when I first got there, like, we practiced, you know, we started practicing, doing OTAs together, and, like, we started to, like, become boys because I'm fucked up in the head like he is. Like, I'm practicing hard as fuck. Like, we're not even in pads, and, you know, I'm a rookie. I'm just trying to make an impression, and, like, I'm flying around the field, and for some reason, like, Richie, obviously, is, he pay, he's paying attention a little bit, seeing how I do shit, and, like, he just, we immediately clicked because he respected it, just how I did shit. And ever since then, bro, we became boys. And I still, like, when he retired, I went up and seen him, like, on his retirement. And, like, me and him have always, you know, been really cool. And he goes to all the freaking games. I'll be on the sideline about to walk. The game's about to start. And he'll be in there in a polo. Max and fucking grab me, give me the biggest hug in the planet, and fucking throw my rib out because he squeezes the life out of me. But he's, yeah, he, I fucking, I can go on and on about Richie, bro. He's, he's a yeah, loyal, he's a man, die hard, just like real, real bro. A sure. healthy, a healthy hey, what uh, a Richie is dog. like one of the best friends to have. No, literally, bro. He's a, he is an incredible human being. Absolutely. It, what a massive fucking dog. He's a, he's a big boy. <laughs> now he stood up and everybody big can dirty. see him too. Everybody's like, holy shit. <laughs> Dude, to, come on, buddy. He literally, he like take my life any second. Oh, anytime you wanted. Max, I, I like I came in the house before I came in the house, and Max is like, "Hey, just walk straight. Don't really, don't look down. I don't make any facial expressions." And I'm just kind of like walking the house, and Max just starts laughing. He's like, "Yo, he's not gonna do nothing." But the no, dude's fucking he, massive. Look at him, look hey, at watch him. the wires. Watch the wires, Dirk. Dirk, go, buddy. He's just gonna. He'll be fine. He'll stay in there for like five minutes. <laughs> he was assessing the situation yeah. before he came over. He doesn't want to fuck shit up. <laughs> Careful, Should we do tear talk? Yeah, do we have? We'll, let's take a, a quick pause and then we'll, <laughs> and we'll find come back something. with tear talk. Yeah. All right, so for tear talk this week, we are going to do best dog breeds. And I feel like best and favorite, there's a gray line there because I'm sure you can look at the best dogs and it's probably not going to equal out with us. We'll say our favorite dog breeds for our tear talk. Yeah. Uh, do you, do you want to go first? Or you want me to go first? I can go first. My uh, no honorable mentions. My tier three is going to be Rottweiler. With a dog growing up, my parents' first dog before they had me, you know how parents do the trial run, like, well, let's do a dog, we can take care of a dog, we can take care of a baby type thing. 
they had a Rottweiler named Conan after Conan the Barbarian. They had him trained all the way up to like he could have been like some kind of like the police style training dog, but he would have had to leave for like three months, but a very well-trained Rottweiler. And so ever since like growing up with Conan, it was like, I loved Rottweilers. My tier two, what I currently have, waffle, English bulldogs. (laughs) They're just so like unique to me, dude. And like, you come home, they don't (laughs) greet you, they stay on the couch. You go and like, you have to go give them love. They kind of just look sad and like, but they love you. They, all they want to do is cuddle. Yeah, they got a couple issues, yeah. But all in all, like, I love English Bulldogs. My buddies would have, would have them when I was growing up and I'd go to their house and I'd love playing with them. And then Rob, uh, Rob Deerdick on uh, Fantasy Factor and everything, when they had that dog and it would skateboard and everything else, I just always thought it was the fucking coolest. Uh, my tier one, pit bulls. I know it's, I know you love pits as well. I think pit bulls are fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you got. I used to have, I used to have a pit named Boogie. I named, I made my dog uh, Boogie after Levante David. Levante David's div- nickname in college was Boogie, mm-hmm. little horny boy. And so I told, I told Boogie, I said, when I get my first dog, it's going to be a pit and I'm going to name him after you. So that's my story about having my pit. Then, you know, my girlfriend and I broke up out of, you know, guilt. You kind of like, you can, have, yeah, we can. You don't got to get yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. We, that we don't need to hear you, we, can, we can cut that part out, but. Um, Did, uh. Pit bulls, dude. Pit bulls. I think, was I think Boogie they're Boogie as horny awesome. as Boogie? Uh, no. No. If you guys hear a baby, that's Max's newborn. She's a stud. Adorable she's trying to, child. She's trying to get Adorable. some time in on the pod. You got to yeah. respect gotta it. Got to respect she, that. Yeah, she likes attention. But, um, but that's my tear talk. Now what the rule is, you go around the room and everybody gives a one-word answer on how they feel like your tear dog went. Kind of like a judgment thing. Okay, I'll let Taylor start this. Diseased. <laughs> Jesus. Not a fan of pits. Magnificent. Fun contrast there. there. Yeah. You JP, go what, what oh, would your yeah. word be? I'll go ahead and echo it. Swole. Swole. Mitch, nice. almost. Hmm. Do you want to go or you want me to go next? I'll go. All right, go I'll ahead, Bob. Go. Um, tier three. I'm going to start off a little curveball. You know, uh, the only dogs I've ever had are pits. My parents, they own little yappy little fuckers. I love them, but I never claimed them. Um, I'm going to start tier three with Dobermans. And the reason why... It's because they're excellent athletes. They're fucking terrifying. <laughs> and there's something about them. Every time I see a Doberman, you get a little, like, you don't know what's going to happen. Is he going to kill me? Is he going to kill me or is he like, I want this dude by my side? Yeah. So every time I see a Doberman, I just have a level of respect for the dog that I felt like it needed to make the list because, you know, they're not loved on enough, I feel like. And they're feared in a way, but I respect them. Um, tier two, um, I'm going to have to go with Rottweilers. My teammates in college, a ton of them had Rottweilers. Clee Farrell, he's got a Rottweiler, great dog. Super loyal, yeah. big-ass teddy bears. But if they need to get the job done, they'll get the job done. So I respect the shit out of them as well. Um, but number one, unanimous decision, pit bulls. I got three best dogs on the planet. They're loving, they're loyal as fuck. But they will take you down if you cross the line. And that's the thing with them. Especially that big motherfucker. Yeah, that my, big motherfucker. My big guy, he's a ex, he's two pit bulls in one. But Is he known as like, a, like an XL? He's an XL bully. So Jesus. he's a pit and an American bulldog. The <laughs> other two existed. are yeah. pit mixes. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, the thing with pits, bro, like they're super loyal but they're big babies at the end of the day. Like, if they love you, they're going to just lay out, like, they act like a, they're a human in the house. And uh, every time I come home, there's, the response is always the same. So I respect their consistency. I respect that they got the grit and they, they're dangerous enough where people, you know, have a little bit of fear when they try to cross the line, but they'll always be there for you. So big shout-out to Pitbulls all around the world. Gritty. Yes, I love that. <laughs> JP? Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Dominant. Dominant from yeah. JP. Mitch? Tough. Tough. Alpha. Oh, just speaking of, dude, I wish the camera can catch that. Look <laughs> at that. 
Man, did you try to rob this place and that dog's Dirk. right there? <laughs> come here, Dirk. Uh, Dirk. Dirk, come here. All right. Here he comes. That was the most Dan Campbell four answers I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Grit. <laughs> Tough. Chevy Tahoe. Yeah. You should just said Dan Campbell. <laughs> we could have just said Silverado. That would have yeah, said it yeah. all. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. My tear talk. Bro, he just walks loud. He's, he's <laughs> heavy. Yeah. 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 Dirk, all whatever. three of my tears are pit bulls. <laughs> Um, okay, let's see. T, uh, t, by tier three, mm. I grew up on a ranch in Arizona. Every mm. cowboy had this dog, and it was the blue healer. Those dogs would work cows. They'd work with horses. They'd work with sheep. they do the job that needed to get done. The reason why they're not higher on my list is because they are a rambunctious, energetic, and if they're not trained properly, they will absolutely ankle bite any visitor at all times. I love the way they look. I love the way they get after it, and they're hardworking, just like the Chevy Silverado, and that's why they must be in my list. I love that. That is my tier three. Taylor, I don't <coughs> want to cut you off, but those blue healers look very similar to, like, German Shepherds, but they're kind of smaller, right? Or am yeah, I completely uh, they're, they're shorter Dirk is getting the business out they're there. Shorter, they're, like, they're shorter haired. Um, okay. I, it's hard to explain. Like, any smart. movie you've seen with a cowboy in it. Smart okay. dogs. Oh, it's okay. I got that, very, Yeah, extremely smart nice. and will go all day. Like, they'll, they'll go and work all day for you. Okay. But okay. if you want to own one, you got to, like, you got to have some wide open spaces for them to run. Yeah. Uh, my tier two. This dog would have never made my list until I met my wife. She has this dog, I think. I didn't know what to think of them. I thought they were beautiful and majestic. I thought scenery, like up in the mountains with the snow. I'm like, wow, what a, what a beautiful dog, but I don't think I'll ever own this one. This dog is going to be the Husky, Siberian Husky. They shed like shit, but my wife's dog, Akira, does getting pets from her is like pickles on a sandwich. She'll take them or leave them. It doesn't really matter to her. She hangs out. She does her thing. She's the most low-maintenance dog in the world, and it's completely changed my views on, on Huskies. I think... They're an incredible species of animal. Extremely smart and very vocal. And my tier one goes out to the greatest dog you could possibly get. When you go down to a humane society and you look around those little crates and gates and you see dogs staring at you, it's not just one type of dog. It's a whole bunch of types of dogs. And when you take a cocktail combination of animals and you put them together most of the time you're going to get the best combo possible so my tier one is the mutt the mix of all those animals you put them together they look funny most of the time they are funny most of the time and they usually have the best personalities so the mutt those pound puppies are my tier one sure <laughs> unique <laughs> J, JP said politically like, correct. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Just we all know you're real number one. Yeah, we do. Why did you never, talk about the I've Chihuahua? I've never owned the number one. The God tier. The, the, oh, no, the, the, why not honorable the mention? The true number one. That? Why not honorable mention it? You love the I Chihuahua. I had him in there. I had him in there, but. He's right. That's why I got a little up in arms as I thought, damn, I'm going to get I don't think I'm ready to take this right now. I'm not ready to take these hands on the internet. But I do love the Chihuahua. I think the Chihuahua <laughs> yeah. what? is fucking How hilarious. Is when I was a little kid and I would see the Takiro Taco Bell dog <laughs> ripping around the little what short hair brown fellas, I would always think to myself, someday I'm going to have this dog and I would have little matching outfits, maybe cool little glasses, little chill boys hanging out. Now... I have a stipulation for these dogs that I'm going to get someday. I will own a Chihuahua someday. I have to make sure that I got, this has got to be an anomaly of a Chihuahua. It can't bark and it, it can't bite. Other than that, dude, they're chill boys and they're outstanding. Maybe you guys should can't bark, can't bite. Word. Boy's gonna have a muzzle <laughs> Chihuahua. <laughs> Chihuahua. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna up, stereotype, but every Chihuahua I've met is the meanest fucking dog I've ever met. In my number life. two in uh, dog attacks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the Chihuahua is ranked number two amongst all dogs. <laughs> And uh, attacks. Wow. That's, that's, wow. You want to redo your one word? No, no. <laughs> if you were going to have Chihuahua, I was going to have uh, high maintenance. Sus. <laughs> Sus. I know who I am. 
Anyways. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, boys and girls, that is. What a way to end the episode. Yeah. Shout out to Wawa. Is there anything else we got for uh, Maxi? I don't think so. I, were you guys listening throughout the episode and was intrigued to get a, a question out or go any further into anything he was saying? Mitch loves ball, so I'm kind of looking at Mitch. Mitch. I feel like he's like, was getting a boner over there listening to you talk about fucking <laughs> work ethic and shit. I love that. Our uh, ESPN reporter, Mitch, wants to know what Devontae Adams brings to a team. Devontae Adams. Um, the thing with him, I, like, I've been, you know, you were you were there with the whole AB saga. Well, you, you came after. But I came like, right after, but it was that same year. Yeah, it was that same year. Um, so that was the first superstar receiver I ever dealt with. So I'm like... Okay, this is, you know, you hear their divas. They're, so I got to experience that whole thing. So my first, like, initial thought was, like, okay, I've heard nothing but good things about Devontae. Like, just from the outside world. Like, you don't hear him talking, like, I'm the best, blah, blah, blah. Like, on the outside, he's, not, he's never been that guy. So when he was coming, I was kind of, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if he was, you know, what he was like, whatever. Get another A.B. Situation. Yeah, like maybe another fucking diva. Like, that's not the guy you want in the locker room, regardless. And the day he came in there, bro, like, when I talk about everything I talked about, like a teammate you want to do to fucking practices the right way, fucking trains the right way, every single day, he's that guy, bro. And he's one of the most humble dudes, but extremely confident at the same time he's not arrogant he's not that but he knows who he is you know what i mean and that's the level of confidence that a lot of guys can't get to because when you talk about Devonte adams it's immediately always oh, best receiver in the league like he's in, always in that conversation so he's just a great teammate bro and he's awesome like just being around him i fucking love Devonte. like he i don't know i don't know how to explain it bro he's unique he's super fucking smart like he's a, just a different type of dude and you could tell like there's a reason why he's different. You know what I mean? Just the way he plays, bro. He has no fear. He knows he's the guy, and like he loves football. And that's that's really all you can say about him, bro. He's I can go on and on, but he's a he's a great teammate, bro. I love him to death. And I've only known him for a year, bro. I fucking I talk to him all the time. Like it's not like you know in most locker rooms. Like sometimes you just talk to your D line guys and stuff like that. Like. Devontae is one of those guys, like, he's one of my, one of the best teammates on the team. I talk to him all the time. He's a captain. He's just a, yeah, he's a total package. That's fucking dope. Yeah, he's a stud, bro. I fucking love that dude. He is a stud. Good question. Good work, Mitchie. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Shot, slight shot. That's okay. That's okay. Love Love it. It. Yeah. We're always looking to improve. We're in growth yeah, mindset. Yeah, yeah. Yes, improve. Yeah. 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 If you yeah. can hear that in the background right now, Dirk is chugging. Yes, he isn't Dirk is taking chugging a single water. breath. He's getting after it, dude. Um, on the, I totally forgot about the AB <laughs> thing. Like, as a rookie, what was that experience like for you? Um, was it as bad as it seemed? Yeah, I bet that I was wild. Know. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. So when I, when I first came in, boom, I got drafted by the Raiders. We signed, like, we had signed AB, Richie. Vontez perfect like we like every big like you think about the craziest motherfucker <laughs> they were all on our team so I didn't know what to expect um the AB shit like AB is a person like if you if AB sat here with us right now and you genuinely like it's just us in the room no cameras nothing you would love AB you would love AB you'd be like he's down to earth he's a great dude but the second he left the building bro you didn't know what the fuck was about to happen it was every day, bro. He would go, what's up, man? Hey, man, what up, man? Ball, Eastern Michigan, blah, blah, blah. I played, you know, he played at Central. Like, that was, like, my end with him. As a rookie, I'm like, I want to be cool with that motherfucker. <laughs> and so we were cool. But, like, you would go home, and all of a sudden, there's something on Instagram. And then, like, as the shit started getting crazy, because he came in, he burned his feet off. And then he had the helmet shit. So he was never practicing. He never was around the offseason. We're like, what the fuck is going on? He would show up here and there, but, like, and wouldn't well, it like, be with, like, a camera crew and shit? Like, bro, all he would boys? bring a posse with him everywhere. To the and this facility. Lock, this bro, locker to, room we the had, locker yeah, room. in the facility. It was not a, it was kind of like a high schoolish. like, you had some aisles, but not a lot of room in the, in the facility yeah. locker room. Bro, like, he had his own posse. So it was, like, in the weight room, he had his own trainers come. So it was just a lot, bro. But you would never, like, if you just sat there, like, he could be really, like, 
he's not a, I don't I don't know he's got he's got his own shit he's got to deal with you know what I mean there's a lot of shit that's going on but like my experience one on one with him outside of the media outside of that shit like he was cool as fuck but I don't know he's got a lot of shit going on but like Vontez like Vontez you would think about Vontez Burford you're like oh my god <laughs> that's yeah. a fucking murderer right yeah. <laughs> he's the, the fucking coolest dude bro like, cool as shit. He came right up to me. Was like, at first, I was terrified. I'm like, okay, this is Vontaze Perfect. That's a bad motherfucker. Like, oh, yeah. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try to earn that respect. Like, I didn't even know how to talk to him at first. He was cool as shit, great leader, like, great dude in the locker room. Like, everyone fucked with him. And he was a real leader. Um, he was dope. And then Richie's the same thing. Like, obviously, Richie's had his shit too. Like, he's gone through a lot of shit. But Richie's a fucking great teammate. So, mm -hmm. yeah, my whole experience with everybody, like, you would think from the outside, it was like, oh, my God. But, like, right. inside the building, like, A.B. was gone before the season. Like, we were just waiting. Like, we're like, okay, is A.B. even going to play? Like, there was something after. There was just always something. And then the, he leaked, like, Gruden's call on the fucking Instagram. Bro, literally after he came up and talked to the whole team. He came up, bro. All the captains went up there. A.B. walked up on the stage. He apologized. We're like, all right, bet. So we're like, okay, he's about to play. Like, fuck yeah, A.B.'s on board now. So everyone's excited. Bro, that night he posted the shit with Gruden and how, you know. That like, is fucking wild, bro. bro. the same day. And I'm a rookie. <laughs> me and Clear are right, like, like, bro, what? <laughs> like, we literally <laughs> just talked so about this shit. Crazy. He's like, I'm done with the games, man. I apologize. Everyone's like, oh, fuck yeah, bro. Like, we get it. Like, everybody goes through shit. So, mm. like, I'm, I'm, that's, from my personal, bro, I always give people the benefit of the doubt. So, like, I'm. This is AB, bro. Like, fuck it. He's going through his shit, but, like, he wants to play. Everything seemed 100% genuine. Boom, boom, boom. Literally that night, he puts on Instagram. <laughs> like, the whole Gruden shit, every, and just, like, I'm like, what? And then by the next morning, he was cut. Me and Clear in the building. Mayock's walking up through the hallway with a smile. Because Mayock had to deal with all this shit. And, and Mayock really wanted him to be a part of it. Gruden, they fucking, they wanted to love him, but, like, there was more to it. You know what I mean? He was going, I don't know what he was going through, but, like, and I pray for dudes like that. I don't know what he's going, what's got, what he's got going on upstairs. Like, it's tough, but yeah, like people were like, it was like a breath of fresh air, bro. It was something every single day. And he was supposed to be our franchise guy. Yeah, like we're bringing A B to fucking Las Vegas. Like the best, bro. The best. The best. He was so Not fucking even close. cold. I'm like, he's my team, bro. He's the coldest. And they said like when he's out on the price field, like that motherfucker is running all day long. Running, bro. And trying to do extra after, like it's just. Bro. It seems, just seems like a bizarre... I've never seen anything like was it. Was there ever a weird know. dynamic between Vontez Burfick and A.B.? Not at all. Really? They're boys. Because you would he, think because he fucking yeah, executed them That's on like the everyone's cloud. like, go-to. Yeah. It's like A.B. was never <laughs> the same after that hit. That's what, people, that's what people say. Yeah, they're like, oh, he got CTE from that. You know, you remember, everyone, that's what they're saying. Like, yeah, yeah, everybody They're like, oh, that. they must fucking not... Bro, when they came in the fucking locker room, bro, everybody was... Everybody was cool as shit. Like, Vontez and him were boys. Like, it was no, there was no friction at all. Richie and AB were boys. Like, it was, when we were all just together as boys, like, as teammates, there was no issues. Yeah. But it's just, there was a bunch of shit going on on the outside. And it just, you look back, you're like, damn, what if? But you'll never know. Right. Man. It's crazy, bro. Like, we've had AB. We well, kind of had AB. Now we have Devonta. Like, we've had some guys come in. It's just. Some cats. It's crazy, bro. Some dudes. Dude, uh, we appreciate you, man. This has been fucking phenomenal. This has been a phenomenal episode. Yes, I've had a blast. I'm glad you guys got to come to the crib, meet the dogs, the whole shabam. It's been you got to meet, you you got got to meet Taylor. Taylor. That was amazing. Some wing stops, some pizza. You know how to host, too. Now. Yeah, wing you stop, pizza, water. the boys. It's, you know, no, It was a little guys. intimidating pulling up and seeing what you got sitting outside. You like that? Yeah, it was nice. Thank you. I appreciate that was all like, it seemed like it was perfectly like manicured for that. <laughs> yeah, was, he, he, he's like, oh, the boys are coming. He's like, yeah, yeah, hold on a second. My Porsche, my Rolls Royce. Yeah, that's perfect. It's like that's a, perfect. Uh, episode of MTV Cribs. Bro, it really was. Absolutely. Yeah, you've earned it. And you're wearing the chain. On the, oh, oh look at, hey, look at the wrists. Both of them. A little something. <laughs> a little something. How many Blast, are you going to do a uh, full bodysuit tattoo? What are we talking about here? Um, I want to get my chest. My upper back and my leg. I want to get my whole like torso done this off season. But Hell we'll yeah. see. My guy is moving to Vegas. He's from Boston, so like I usually only get to see him like once an off season, and we just knock shit out. But he's moving here in March, so 
You might get some uh, some action. Yeah, there. get it right. Yeah, I'm trying to get like you. You got all type of shit. Yeah, we're covered up a little bit. I guess I got work to do still. Yeah, for There's sure. There's work out there for yeah, you. Yeah, my legs, bro. My He's le- got a massive. I got my legs. I haven't even got back to him because they hurt. So you have to see bad. his chest. He's got a fucking cool little. Uh, yeah, he's got a stag buck. on there. Yeah, yeah, stag. I'm starting to get. I'm starting to have most of my torso done. I need. There's a couple more pieces right here, but I have my whole back done. Need to get like. A couple places. It's not important, but I'm gonna get a lot of shit done. Yeah, I'm with you. It's gonna be a big off season. Yeah, big off season. <laughs> I love uh, it. Try to go do it. Well, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Please like, subscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe. Hit that merch if you're looking for the Budweiser. Can't get it anymore. It's over, boss. So. <laughs> I love, I love shit. how that's like yeah, your default like and thing. then as you're saying you're like ah yeah by the time this comes out it's going to be over with no no, no I knew that this time the <laughs> okay. last time I did it uh, a couple days ago yeah. I didn't yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, big hugs tiny kisses